Okie dokie, and the last game for the ANZ Open slash... Yeah, Open, which, so, uh, the way that the event ran was there was the Masters event, which is a 16-player knockout, and then there was a parallel to that, an Open event. So the Masters event then, as you lost, um, you would drop into the Open event and just continue playing. Um, and the very last round, so the winner of the Australian Masters would then play the current leader of the Australian Open. And um, whoever played that you know, was the winner of... Um, and theoretically, and it, it, as it turned out, it, um, the winner was... It could be the same person. Uh, anyway, um, play Stuart. <laughs> um, I think the commentators did a really good job in this where uh, Dark Elder, especially Venom Span Dark Elder, does, has always done very, very well um, against Tyranids. Um, when, when you're wounding everything on a 4-up, regardless of whatever your toughness is, uh, not that he had particularly tough models, you know, he had lots of termagants, etc., but um, when you're always hurting stuff and you can control it through, you know, MSU um, and position, like, you know, you can, you can kind of block uh, the movement, you can block uh, where the threats are coming from, coming from. Um, and Stuart was running a, a whole bunch of zone tropes, which meant I could soak up a whole bunch of his smites through my venoms. Like I would sacrifice venoms um, to limit where the um, the smites came through for like characters and things like that. Uh, anyway, watch the game. Um, I think Stuart um, planned for everything um, well, but because I played both, I played Tyranids and I played against Tyranids so much. I knew exactly what I needed to do. I needed to focus on the Termagants, limit the carpet, so to speak, um, and then slowly start chipping into the uh, zone tropes. Um, don't focus the zone tropes first. There's no need to um, you know, use my solitaire to kill key combat characters. Um, yeah, so you know, my, my game plan, I think, was, was solid. Um, and then when you watch the actual game itself, I, I think I execute um, pretty well. Um, other than that, I think it was a, a very, very good event. Um, every one of my opponents, um, bar Oliver, um, sorry, every one of my opponents won the roll off to go first against me. Uh, and Oliver took first, which I think was a mistake. Uh, whereas the next four opponents, so uh, Liam, um, Chris, Stuart, and um, Adam, they all picked second. Um, so they could control you know, the holding more, the killing more, that type of stuff, uh, which I think is the correct choice, and it made all of my games much, in my opinion, much harder than they had to be <laughs> had I gone second. I, I wish just one game I could have picked to gone second. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Um, but yeah, overall, really cool. My kids love the uh, uh, the Nerf guns. Um, I got one of them that I brought back up, and one of them that I still need to, to get, so I think at ATC... Uh, someone from um, Melbourne is going to be bringing it out for me. Um, and then I'll be even more popular, Dad. <laughs> anyway, alright guys. Have a, have, a, have a watch through this last game. And I'll see you later. Alrighty, Alrighty. round five. So I've, I've won the uh, Masters and I'm now playing for the whole thing. First thing, Stuart and his uh, Nid army, which was, what was it? Inspired by Eric. Inspired by Eric. So if Eric sees this, uh, oh, he thanks will. to the inspiration, um, so you're a really great player. He's awesome watching you at CanCon. Excellent. Um, well, he's watching right now and he commentated the last game. There you go. So, you point out all my mistakes. That'd be perfect. There you go. You have a request, Eric. Alright. So, Dark Elder loves playing against Tyranids. There is nothing, I think, better than Tyranids. Alright, so just a little sound check myself, make sure we're doing all good. Uh, and we are joined with Mr. Camilleri. Hi guys, Mike. That's terrifying. Um, Alright, so we are going into the final round. Uh, as said, Simon's List, we've gone through quite a number of times uh, to date, so I'm going to just rush over it real quickly, but remembering that at any point, if you want to have a look at the games... Don't do Simon's. Oh, well, some people are new. He doesn't deserve it. He hasn't been anyone worth beating. He beat this guy last round. Wasn't worth beating. Uh, so basically, it's 11 Venoms, 3 Ravages, and then Witches, Catalytes, Characters to fill said Venoms. And that's it. It's a um, lot of poison shots, I can tell you right now. After being on the receiving end. It's a lot of poison shots, man. Holy crap. Yep. Uh, we have... So, uh, in the... 
So that's I guess in the yellow in the, corner. In the yellow corner. In the red corner. We'll go with uh, Wayne Oliver, Oily Rag, Stuart, Stuart the Kid Stuart the Kid Trainer. Um, we've got a battalion <laughs> of Leviathan with a Brood Lord, Malanthrope. Uh, three Rippers, Dirty Gaunts, Dirty Gaunts with Flesh Borers. Then he has a Supreme Command detachment of Gene Stealer Cult with Cult of the Forearm Emperor. Uh, Abominant, Magus, 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 uh, Patriarch. Uh, and then a Sanctus, so that's the um, the Vindicator dude. Yeah. Um, and then he has a battalion of Leviathan with Neurothrope, Neurothrope, 30, 29, and, 20, and 30 Gaunts. So what's that total, 120? Uh, 120? 30, 60, 90, 120, 149. Uh, four Xanthropes, four Xanthropes, four Xanthropes. I love Zoe's. Yeah. Um, and he caps out at 19, 38 points. So I'm assuming that's... Um, yeah, it's Yeah, it's Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. So, uh, I hope Eric Thorsus is watching this because it's an Eric inspired list. So is. It so is. And Stu, Stu Trainer, he's somebody who's very much an up and coming in the big scene. Yep. He's actually probably the uh, biggest up and coming at the moment. He's, he's gone from um, lower middle tables, he's skyrocketing up, and he's now he's in the top table essentially. Well, sure is. Yeah, top table of, of this event. Um, and look, he's got a lot to play for. Unfortunately, putting it out there right now, this is, I think, heavily weighted in Song's favour, both in experience and in lists. Yeah. So, 150 Gaunts is not going to hold up against that many poisons. Also, it's worth pointing out that. Uh, Simon will have played many a game against Eric. Against against Eric. Exact um, exact whether or not he played his Venom spam against that list is another story, but he would have play tested against that kind of style. So there's two there's two reasons that this is bad for Stuart. First one is those Venom threats, those three up invulnerables, don't count for much when he's just piling, piling on layers and layers and layers of Venom shots. And secondly, his hordes, these other things are lying on, it doesn't count for much when he's just piling those Venom yep. shots. Lastly, the Dizzy, Dizzy Ravagers are actually very good in some threats. Actually very legitimately good. Again, he's, got, he's got real ones to hit and to win because he's got his uh, Warlord trait on that... Um, Warlord trait on the dude? Archon? On the Archon? No, so, uh, yeah, no, he's, he's got, got on the um, Death Jester. No, he's got, he's got, he has, he has real living news. So he's got the real ones, he wants something. Yeah, he me. Okay. Um, so, 27 Dizzy Ravages. Hit on threes or fours, reeling ones. Win on threes, reeling ones. Probably most of the unit of fours, always dead. Yeah, Sonia's uh, just pointed out. Uh, so for those that have followed, followed um, uh, Simon's, uh, I'll say, 40k career, yep. uh, he has had, uh, what was the first channel he had? I want to say something, tactics? No, um, uh. I'm going to mute and yell. Tabletop Tawnies was his original one, where he did um, post-event... Um, it's just lame, isn't it? Yeah, well, it was good. Uh, and he did uh, post-event analysis of his games. He did uh, video footage of it. It was like the time-lapse stuff, and released that on YouTube. So you can see tons and tons and tons of Simon's games. Proof every tournament game for the last, like, probably five years he's got recorded. Um, he has only recorded one this event, because all other games have been live on stream. Yeah, there's only two. We, we did it all. We did it for him. So this is a four, four objective mission, yeah? It's one four objective. One in the center of each table four. Oh, no, the player place. Player place. Just, what, yeah. It's just rough the weather. Yeah, it's rough the weather. And and they've gone like, the like pointy, pointy dawn of war. Pointy dawn of war. So this actually, so there's one thing. So he's heavily weighted his center. He's yep. got all his onthrops in the center. He's got the malanthrope in there as well. These are his gaunts spread out. Um, very Eric-esque. Yep. <laughs> but Eric usually ends up doing a horseshoe. These guys, the, the flanks move out um, yep. and tendril out. So I'm interested to know if he does that. This, but, um, look what Simon's done. He's, split, he's got a wicker force to the uh, the bottom right on that objective. Yep. Looks like three venoms there, and then to the left. Uh, four venoms. There's a blue venom and three yellows. And then to the left, that he's got seven venoms and his three ravages. So he knows he's leaving a, a weak flank, but he's. I just feel a little bit distracting. I'd love to know where his solitaire and where his, uh, his death chest. Well, I'll do a roam shortly, and we'll uh, yeah, we'll have a peek. Uh, we're going to be joined by Mr. Baskin, isn't it? Uh, we will be. Fantastic. Um, Good friend of the channel. Supported us to our very first stream. He did. He did. Good yeah, the ob Objective Secured. Um, uh, you can find them at objective objectivesecured.com.au. They're also on Facebook. Uh, they run a hell of a lot of events out of WA, but their biggest um, centerpiece, I guess, uh, would be the Southern Hemisphere Open. Yep. Um, when we get uh, Mike on at some stage um, this round, uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about it. I think it's up to its third year, maybe fourth. Mm. Uh, this game here, so Simon has already won the ANZ 40K Masters, which means... This is the prize. It's it's a trophy. Giant, giant game. What's that on? Fun? What's that on? Green stuff. Green stuff. You green stuff it on. Because <laughs> uh, it had stuff there. It had like nerf symbols and stuff, yeah. Well, the nerf symbols are actually um, Dremel off. Um, oh, yeah. The winner of this game, which could be Simon, gets the baby gun. The baby bolt gun uh, on a Clean. stand, <laughs> which says. ANZ 40k Open 2019 champion, uh, and that'll just uh, sit right in there, sit on a bookshelf or whatever else. Get broken by his kids in three minutes. That stand? Probably. Who goes to Simon? <laughs> um, so Simon's family are currently watching this. I think we're on a TV in the living room. Nice. Uh, they should all have their own device they and get this view counter. They should, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I'm just trying to figure out who's going first. I think we're still doing the point. Still doing the point. Yeah, still got these little baggies of these guys with different squads. Um, I, I still really want to know where these characters are. I can, I can see some characters here. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do a little run. Do a little run. I'll do, I'll do just a circle. I need that. Oh, actually, I'll just um, click some buttons. Alright, keep talking. So, what do we got? 
So I was thinking that we got some characters here, and that, that's the, probably, the, probably the primary reason is with that bubble of units there. Yeah, it's probably because he knows he's got a 30-inch 30, 30 move with the solitaire, which will get him very close, very close to, to that knot of characters, that knot of um, his own tropes. So he's probably going to... If I was if I was Simon, he's definitely got the, the fly power to clear 30 termagants in one turn. Yep. And it only looks like he's got one unit. It's, it only looks like he's got one unit there of termagants. So he could clear that one, exposing all these Zoes, and just punch right through. What he really wants to go for would be the Malanthrope. And, um, so the Malanthrope is right here, guys. So if he could punch away this unit, he would expose a, t a, somewhere for the, a charge for the Solitaire to get in there. And if, that, that would be uh, game-defining. Losing that minus one to hit opens up a gamut of options for him. Okay. I'm hearing we have a roll for first. And the roll. You can hear me. Yay. I was like we just had a siege roll by Stuart, and I think he's failed, so I believe Simon's going first. So Simon's going second, which I think is the right call in this game. He doesn't have much fear of getting hurt significantly top of turn one, so I think it's, it's, he's fine to go, to go second to Simon, and he'll probably want to. Simon's um, uh, secondaries, he's chosen the Reaper, no brainer, Headhunter, no brainer, and Recon. Recon's the testing one. Recon is the testing one, but Recon should be very doable with how many uh, advances he's got. Should be, should be fine. Right. Should we come? All right, guys. Sounds like. All right, so you can hear me. Yeah, you guys hear me. Okay. All right, so in the bottom right-hand corner, we have a venom with some catalytes. Uh, in the kind of just to the right of the center, we have where the four venoms are. We have two death jesters, the Stolotaire and the Troopmaster. All the Hulkins characters. All the Hulkins characters. Then we have one, two units of Witches, one unit of Catalytes, and probably some characters in Arkham. And on the left hand side, we have the three Ravagers, and then a whole bunch of Venoms. Uh, doesn't look like there's any characters on the left hand side of the board. Yeah, so, he, so he's going to get his Death Justice up here, and he's going to start taking punts. Uh, probably, uh, if I can get them, he'll go for the Magus, 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 he'll And uh, the Sniper dude, I don't know what it's called anymore. Um, can you tell me where I'll get those two characters? Um, so we have two units of Gaunts at the front by the looks of it. Yep. Um, and the Sniper dude? Yeah, so Sniper dude is currently in Cold Ambush. Cold Ambush. Yep. Alright. So he's not being Sniper, he's not Blipping, he's a blip. Oh, that's actually... Uh, yeah, we got the blip. Yep. Yeah. All right, and it looks like Simon's got the first turn. Yeah, and Simon's decided to go first. Uh, no, Stuart won the dice roll uh, and Simon made Simon go first. first. We got the um, While I'm over here uh, on table two, we have Pete, the redneck, red beard, good tell <laughs> yep. from the Australian EDC team captain first for 2019. He's, he's playing against Liam Hackett. Uh, so they've deployed. Um, What's going on? Uh, <laughs> Liam's cheating. Yep. All right. So it looks like yeah, Simon is just doing some measurements on these. Um, uh, he's measuring he's another one of the blips too far forward. Um, so he's just uh, yeah. very, 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 very amicable. Yeah. All good. I think it must have paid the CP. Turn his like three or four blips into seven, which is what he's getting out. So he's just pretty distracted to be in any of those things. So it's. If he wants, he can have probably out of one side, and most of the best deaths. Uh, holy crap, I'm telling you, the best deaths. Sorry, it's getting really loud. I'm interested to know how aggressive Simon gets. Just what? I'm interested to know how aggressive Simon gets. He, I think the onus is on Stuart to try and win this game. Right now, I think it is Simon's game to lose, just based on this matchup. Looks like he's actually pushing out some Cabalites, I'd assume. Maybe he's just literally trying to maximize... Oh, okay, so he's, he's trying to get a recon. He's trying to get a recon point without giving up a venom. Because actually, venom is actually really valuable in this game. He can't just throw them away, he needs them all to keep his walk clearance up. So he is pushing out some Cabalites, and they've got over the center of the board, so they're going to get a recon point for him. He's probably going to do the same uh, with the, whatever units inside this venom. They're going to get out there, a three inches probably to there, and then they're going to move in advance and just need to get to there, which is probably doable with a seven plus any, any kind of decent advance. So how, um, how bad do you think the first turn's going to go? I, so it depends on how aggressive Simon wants to be. I don't think Simon needs to be aggressive. I think Simon uh, just gets into decent range, with, decent, in range with all his venoms and tries to wipe a unit to two units of the turn against his turn. Uh, I don't think he needs to do much else. Unless he wants, unless he's ballsy and he wants to use all his firepower into the venom throws, in which case I think he kills a unit and a half, maybe two units. Killing two units of venom throws uh, this turn would be massive, massive for cutting down on the damage dealing. Because the only stuff he's got to actually pull down venoms is smites. So killing two units of uh, zone throws this early in the game means that his, his ability to kill venoms is gone. He has to rely on characters after that. So that might be the play, but then you're gambling on the three pluses, three pluses bottom says going your way. Oh, look, with Simon's way to fire, you can do it. There's, there's, I don't think there's any issues. Uh, who are you tipping in the uh, Liam vs. Pete game? That's, that's too easy. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do the math in just a second. I mean, you can't leave, you can't do math. Yeah, so. it's on card. 
Oh, he's just paying for our drinks downstairs. Did you do that? We've got a record of, of, of transaction downstairs. Playing drinks. Quality stream. It's a quality stream, guys. Quality stuff. You're welcome. <laughs> that's that's Matt, Morris, Matt number one Morisoli's hand right there. There he is. Matt number one. He's just shuffling the rabbits around. They, they outrange everything in, in Stuart's army by a bucket load. There's no need for them to literally ever get shot, really. The only thing I might copy is some models from... Uh, what's, the, what's the model one? Some Blackie Spring. 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 I've got to have my phone on mute, lads. Um, <laughs> we get my it. bad. It's alright, whatever, man. You only lost us a viewer. I'm not coming. One viewer. Mate, I was getting drinks. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Bottle of water, water. in. And a bottle of water. Bottle of water. <laughs> that's healthy. That's healthy, uh, guys. I have wank coconut water. And a bottle of water. Do you use coconut We are men of taste, civilization, class, and elegance. More arse than class, if you want to Much more arse than class. Right. So, Thomas from first, as we know. Yep. He's moved advanced uh, one unit of Cadillacs out just to get over this line to recon. And I think he's done the same there. He's moved advanced one um, one Venom to get just over the line there, yep. just over the line there. Just looking to pick up recon this turn and probably pick up two um, the recon points. So, now what I'm curious to see is whether he just goes all in and just wipes a unit or two of Gaunts, yep. or he goes all in on the Zoe's. Because the Zoe's are the only thing that really threatens doing these yep. amounts of damage to him. So, killing so, the Zoe's early means that he's going to guarantee longevity. The top down view makes it a little harder to see, but it's actually very clear from the, the, the table. So, basically, what we've got. Um, there is a unit that kind of goes like this, like I think there, yep. and another one that goes like there. Yep. All right. So depending on models being removed, um, he could have a situation where he just removes until his models out of line of sight. If he's yeah. Because well, obviously be... each of the venoms can kill a number, but they're doing a smaller number of shots each venom. Yeah. Uh, so what you end up with a situation where if you take the right models in the right order, you still protect the characters. Yeah. And you, but, um, and you potentially mean that you don't lose. Uh, well, you definitely you can't stop him losing Reaper yeah. points, but you can stop him getting kill one, for example. Yeah, exactly right. Now Stuart's chosen his secondaries. He's chose Recon, Grand Control, and Butcher's Build. I like the choice of Recon and Grand Control. Yeah. His betting is going to be there for the long game, which I think he always has to. There's no, I don't think there's any other good, good choices. Recon's a no-brainer. Um, Butcher's Build is what I'm, I'm worried about. Yep. The only way he gets Butcher's Build is if he gets people out of venoms. I can't see him sliding down to venoms. He can do it, but he needs to roll, needs to roll decently hot and get all his powers off. And for uh, for Sun to not kill any Zone Yeah. Which I, I'm now starting to think is the plan. As soon as the Zoe's are gone, you can't kill Venoms, you can't win the game. They just gunboat around for as long as they want. Yep. They can charge him with false back shoots, false back shoots, whatever. Um, so I, yeah, I think the right place to go for the Zone Threats. Uh, so he's just, he's just uh, chucked his two death chests up on top of those ruins, which is the right, which is exactly what he's going to do. Uh, where are we? Lost mouse. Lost my mouse. There we go. So there's our two death chests. I'm guessing that one's the Curtain Fall Relic one. And dude, my god. Kernfall is amazing. Incredible dude. Absolutely bonkers. Bonkers and powerful. Right. So I think he's got every venom in range, that would be my guess. Except maybe this one. The one lying in the back. Just holding that objective. Look, yeah, one. sure, he might be able to um uh, with that bottom venom uh kill those. Yeah, he still might be in range. Um it, look he's got line of sight, but yeah, the question is whether he has range or not. Yeah. Um just like the game is the, the casualties have begun and he's taken off turning into my gun from Yep. Well, that's another thing you can do. You just take away board control, and you, all of a sudden, Stuart has trouble getting Hallmore. Because we're, we're, you can be almost certain um, he's not going to get Killmore, so Simon's not going to get Killmore. But um, unless, he, unless he's just not thinking they're going to kill much of each other early up, just because of the, the high density of model count for Stuart, um, he's just not going to take many casualties. But here's something I would have done interesting for Simon. I would have shot the Ravages first. Yeah. If he's planning to invest anything in his own I think the Ravages go first, see how much damage you do, and then pile on the Venoms if you, do, if you feel like you've done enough. If you've got three. If yeah. you've got three to three ups, if you kill two or three from the unit, pile on, finish that off with some Venoms, and then switch over. Um, and then he can do that every turn. Every turn he picks up his and you know, 20 to 30 champions. And then within the turn three, he's still done his Yep. Yeah. Nice little Sprook. Sprooky, Sprooky. You watching Chelsea? Ah, nice. It takes so much. Thank you. It takes so much. Watching it on mobile devices it does heat it up. Alright. How, how far off is that? Or are we minutes? Beautiful. So into, uh, I can't see how many he's picking up, but he's picked up a handful. Oh, sorry, now he's just revealing, he's revealing his blips. He's revealing where his character is. Blip, 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 blip. A bit of security, he's right there. Sup, sup indeed. Hello, how are you doing? Alright, which means he's probably online. Or will be shortly. Mm. We should do uh, a rendition of Guns N' Roses Welcome to the Jungle. Welcome to the Jungle! We got 40Ks. We got 40Ks! Yeah, let's see, that's the whole thing. <laughs> what do you think? We got, a reasonable, uh... we got lots of games to play, some guys do guys. Whoa! <laughs> uh, we're gonna delete that bit. <laughs> Editing. <laughs> that one. Okay. Uh, uh, I wish I was just dialing up six times. 
Each man's going to have five shots, two from the rifle, three from the cannon, and he's got 11. So, 55 bench shots, just a few. And most, a lot of them will be rolling rolling once they keep on swimming, whatever, depending on where the arc is. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Michael Bass trying to jump on Discord now. It looks like he is targeting Terminus, he's just trying to pick up a unit. It looks like he's focusing on one unit though, because they have range to get one of those front units. It looks like he's not going for it. He's just going to um, pluck, pluck around the periphery. Which is something that's just invented. Pluck around the periphery. Periphery. It's going to pluck around the air size. Alright. He doesn't need to kill him, except for kill. If he's, if he's given up getting a kill, maybe he's said stuff it and just like, I'm just gonna go for Reapers, just gonna get early Reapers. Look, I know. The, um, if you ever want to get those characters, yeah, you um, know. you've yeah. got to, like, alright, so Simon's picked 10 Wait, does he? He's got two Vestures. Make a funny character. Every turn. Well. Yeah, they can. Okay. Together, together they can. Especially the Gene Stoker characters. So yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, so he's just picking up against from that uh, list squad. Top list squad. But yeah, I still think shoot the Dizzy's, shoot the dizzy's first. Unless he's just going to kill Terminus and the Dizzy's. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon uh, you're right. He should have... He should have shot... Hey! Oh, Michael, he's on, brother. Alright, can, can you hear us coming through, mate? Yeah, I can hear you guys just fine. How about me? Uh, you are coming through pretty loud and clear uh, on our end, but what I'm going to do is chuck in my Twitch headphones. <laughs> so many different uh, things to make sure this works. Mandalorian Knights, how you doing, brother? Welcome. Here we go, Ravages. I'm just going to remember to mute the, um, the, the down under stream while I've got Discord open because I'm getting it in stereo, but about 30 seconds delayed. Ah, okay, yeah. <laughs> So we're still just going with Venom. I thought he was doing a Ravager before, but he's not. Oh, is that a nice backdoor box? <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at that. Uh, yeah. That's the one. We should do something better next time. We're going to do something better now. Good. He's coming through better than us. <laughs> <laughs> sweet babies, though, yeah, man. Oh, you've not seen this before, Mandalorian. Haven't seen these sweet babies. Bring it. Tyranny's vs. Eldar. This is this. Just stand up. Yeah, that'll do. Um, so is Mandalorian Knight one of the guys we have to get dice to? Is that Brendan Knight? So Ben, Ben. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I have, but both of you together is solid. Oh, okay. Sure that <laughs> I don't have much of an ass. I'm more, I'm more front waiting. You can, yes. you can read into that. Are, I'm pretty sure we aren't dice. You were flashing your ass in that last stream game, man. Every time you went over the table, your ass crack was out. <laughs> was, it, was it? I don't think so, but uh, sure, maybe. There we go. <laughs> So how things with you, Mike? So uh, now that Mike's on, let me just uh, quickly... Sh so Mike is joining us from WA, from uh, the lovely Objective Secure team, the Warhammer Heroes. Yeah. Um, as, fact, voted, as voted by the people. Yeah, voted by the yeah, people. Yeah, which is really awesome. Yeah. I'm one half of the team, I should I should probably clarify there, that um, yes. yep. Emma and I both were nominated and both won. We were the first Aussies to get the Warhammer Heroes, and it's nice to, for it to be both of us. Um, so why don't we, um, I guess, open the, uh, open the floor. Is there anything, uh, any kind of show that you might want to be plugging? Oh, look, there's... There's more than a few things I can plug, but our big one is, um, which you guys, your first stream, I believe, was actually over with us it was. in, um, in 2018 at the Southern Hemisphere Open. It's our West Australian Gaming Convention we hold. This is the third year we'll be hosting it. Um, we might even have a space for you guys in June uh, 1, 2, and 3 while we have it um, here in Perth. And I'll talk to you about that off air. Ooh. Ooh. Um, what was that? Ooh. So, yeah, we, uh, we've got I think it's 19 different tournaments running over those three days. 40K, Age of Sigma, um, Bolt Action, um, a whole host like X-Wing, a whole host of different games. Malifaux, War Machine, Hordes. Um, yeah, it's um, it's a full-on three days of insanity. We do 40k all three days. We're doing Titanicus. We're doing 30k. We've got Age of Sigma, Shades Buyer. Yeah, it's it's three days of utter mania. But we've had to move dates and venues this year, so that's been an extra challenge thrown into the mix. Yeah. Uh, we also met uh, our very uh, we met the, the very lovely the other very lovely Emma um, <laughs> uh, and um, the, the team at OTP Terrain. No, 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 yeah. Yep. Uh, at uh, Southern Hemisphere Open. Who have been so, our longest sponsor? Supporter. They have. They're yeah. an awesome team over there. It's um it's really funny. I actually had to put a post out a couple of days ago because um, I had people getting in touch with me saying um, they'd seen ads for the show that we're obviously running at the moment on Facebook and that sort of thing. And Emma from OTP obviously publicises a lot about the stuff that she's doing. I had someone get in touch and say, hey, can you please get your Emma to stop doing all this stuff? And I said, well, it's actually two different people. Yeah. Um, so there was a bit of confusion in the community here in WA, so I had to clarify that and say, no, 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 one Emma is different to the other Emma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not the same person. Yeah, it's not one Emma bombarding actually, you with like tons humans. and tons of content. Yeah. The only person that bombards on, on, on that many channels is this idiot, me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, we just had uh, Brendan, is Brendan up? Uh, yes, yes. Joy's attention to our wonderful objectives that we've uh, created. Yes, we have, there are two spares. Which we, have 30, we have 30 sets of these uh, being made as we speak right now. And they're going to be sold. What are they made of? Sorry? What are they made of? They're neoprene, mats. So, mats pad. That's the material. I was literally looking at doing that for show this year. Do not do it. Do not cut our lunch like that. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So we, we've been doing it for War Machine for the last two years for yeah, their um, exactly. deployment zones. It's time for some 40k to catch up because these are exactly six inches. So three inch radius, three radius six inch diameter. You always measure objectives from the center. Yep. And it's usually three inches from the center. So it's just three inch. It's just a three. Sorry, just six inches all the way around from the center. Yeah. All the way everywhere. So as long as
as you're on it, you're holding an objective. Yep. So there's no ambiguity, there's no nothing. You chuck it down. If, if any part of your model is on top of it, you're holding an objective. Yeah. And the other thing, which is a little harder to see, but hey, we can pick up cameras, so let's just do this. All right, what am I doing? All right, man. You can't fucking slide them. Like, like you have to re yeah. slide, slide you can throw it. Fucking, they don't please slide. So there's, slide. There's, no, there's no risk of like you moving on the table and shit, which is something that's really annoying because you've got so many dice in a game. You knock them here, you knock them there, you move, you move. Yeah. There's a lot of defensive in a game of 40k. Just knock your shit around. We've seen it. We circle them at the start of the game on our overlay. Yeah. By the end of the game, they're like six inches off from where they started. Mate, Bren think, Brendan, Brendan Knight's got some like rippers coming out. Uh, six inches all the way around. You heard it first from Adam. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we will be um, giving one set of these away to the ANZ 40k master, Simon. Um, yeah, big Daddy Goochie. Let's not give him to Simon. Well, no, when I say give, uh, the, it's a prize. He's, getting, he's taking enough from us. He he's taking, he's taking enough from this team. <laughs> By that, everything from me, because you're not going to be our last round. Yeah, so for those who are watching the last round, um, Adam and Tottenham. Top table, playing, top table, table masters. Um, and I and down, I'm not sure if you've seen this yet, Mike, but uh, I know we were talking about it. You're showing off your gun again. Any chance he gets to show off his gun? Yeah, I actually saw that when you were showing it off earlier in the last round. Um, yeah. Anyway, we should call this game a little bit more. True. It looks like that. So there's a top, top uh, left unit of gauntlets, but they take a significant cut of each. So about probably about 12 gauntlets in there. Uh, possibly. Oh, I didn't get any bolter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the, the, the stream I'm watching is clearly about 15 seconds or 30 seconds delayed from what I'm hearing. Yeah. Twi so... Which, unfortunately, no matter what we, we do on our end, so Twitch allows you to set up uh, a deliberate delay. So obviously, a lot of a lot of gamers will will live, will live stream their um, their gaming and tournaments and stuff. All right. Now there needs to be a delay because if there isn't a delay, someone knows where you are and they can come find you and things like oh, that. Okay, yeah, so yeah. you can deliberately set up a delay. Even if you don't want one, so we have one set at zero, um, there is a delay with Twitch. Always is. Nothing to do about um, yeah. uh, so it. Yeah. So in answer to your question, the ANZ Open is a 2,000 point ITC uh, format event. Uh, so it's the Masters. Uh, it is a bracketed system. Uh, if you want to know what that means, uh, basically it uses the... Well, we had it first, but it uses, if you're looking for something uh, to read up on, the Shadespire uh, Grand Clash um, player pack, or rules pack, or tournament pack, whichever part of the world you live in. Um, basically, you get broken into brackets based on how many wins you've got, and then top place bottom in each bracket. Yeah, um, which is something that you and I worked through for show last year. Yes, and, um, and something that we've done at Masters for... Vic Masters, I think, for three years. ANZ Masters, at least for two. Um, Ooh, Simon. I think the next event's actually using it as well for 40k. So Simon's just something, done something pretty bold here. It's so a bold move card. That, that, that uh, unit of witches he just put out there. I think they're witches. Because oh, you, you said there was only witches in the bottom right hand corner. Yeah? One of the couple of twos are witches. Like, the chances are they're witches. So he's going to walk in and he's going to try and tap two units of termagants and shard net them both. So they can't fall back. They can't move. Which stops up and blocks up, blocks up Stuart Trainer. The good thing is, well, they curse slightly from the main army list, which means that you're only losing one for morale if you do start in combat. So yeah. that shard net will be the last to go. It is uh, four witches, you are correct. Yeah. And they have engaged. Two units of gauntlets. So he's going to try and stop both of those from falling back, which means 60 gauntlets don't get to move in his turn past the moving consolidate. That's no spreading out, that's no advancing, that's no charging in their turn. That's, 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 that's one unit of five witches. I've just let Stuart Trainers walk control that by a turn. Um, that's, um, um, it looks like those witches have actually only held up one unit of gaunt. Okay. Uh, there are some violins, but um, we'll see how that goes. So the chances of what we're likely looking at the, the game be, what, 10 gaunts to fight? Uh, yep. Well, mate, nine at best, I reckon. Yeah. So, the chances of them killing four witches are pretty low. Pretty low. Pretty low. Pretty low. Pretty low. Pretty low. And stick up to no pain. There's no way they are. Do you know what combat drive they've got, Diff? Can you see that from the one? Plus two movement. And then they have the plus one power from pain. Yeah, so they're, yeah. that's the uh, reroll charge range. So, yeah. one. Plus two is moving out the venom. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, well very well Very well played out by Simon. And also an attack between the four of them that they'll probably clear half a dozen gauns. So it looks like so it looks like trading for turn one. And it looks like he's advanced that unit of uh gaunt on the far left. It looks like that's all that's left of oh no, that's, that's the continuation unit. I thought he cut that unit down to only a couple left. Have we got any scores coming in? We've got one primary so We're filling that now. Yep. So No kills. kills yeah. so it's a we did get a kill. And a rape point. We did get a kill. Yeah, what did you get? Uh one of the units of gaunt, I think. Yeah. yeah. This, this list with Simon's, the amount of poison that this thing shoots, I mean, I played a similar Drakari army for many years, and he's definitely got enough guns to deal with all those gorns. Absolutely, he does, man. And he's not even, he, did, he did that without being rapid fire. He's twice as many shots he could put out for what he did last time. Yeah, those guns are learning to get more dangerous as they get closer. Exactly right. But he's going to dance out and stay at match range until you think he needs to come into the kill, and then he'll come in and he'll wipe two units. Um, the those, those, those are flesh borer gorns from memory when I saw the yep. list. So, the maximum threat's 18. If he sits those venoms at um, just under 24 inches, he's still putting out five shots. Exactly right. And no threat, no threat of a prize. Really. And look, it's a really bad attempt, guys. They're going to be hitting on fives, winning on fives. It's not good. And then you've got four up armor safe. Exactly and right. black hearts, which I think most of the time is either got feeling no pain as well. There's one that's not. He's got 10 black hearts and one yep. that's not. Yeah, there's one one venom that is uh, from the witch um, the the battalion, curse the curse wave, and then the rest are black heart. Um, I'm not sure if it makes a huge difference, but I'm trying to check which one might be that 
Is there any real context or relevance of which one might be which? Uh, not really. The, well, the Cursed Blade one won't get the um, Feel No Pain, but it will get Strength 6 in combat. So, just for the context, guys. So, which one's the Cursed Blade? One has two Cursed Blades. Uh, it's the blue one. Yeah, so it's the blue one at the front. Yeah. Is there the two blue ones, and one of them is always the Cursed Blade. That's cool. Yeah. It's a lot of Venom. A lot of it is. It is. And he hasn't got any chance of changing the status quo this turn. Um, 18 inch range on his smites. So he's only going to be able to smite out those wishes down. Really, realistically. Oh. So he's got, he's got yes, four going to be the best way to shift them. Yeah. Which has locked up all his dollar slates. Yeah. To slide yeah. Him. And he's got a key out to start there. Um, so really good work. Oh. <laughs> it's nice having a posse. Just to play to sit there and just. Like, yeah, that's right. So yeah, it looks like he's he's gonna have pretty ineffectual cycle phase because all he's gonna do is be in range to smite out four four witches, four witches. Um they'll get punted for sure. Uh, but he's just gonna do a repositioning. It looks like he's trying to swing around to this side of the table with his with his doors and occupy all this, which is probably the right play, but the problem is there's no objectives there. There's only one objective. Yeah, there. I'm not sure why he's decided to go all the way over there. Yeah. Am I right in saying the steel units? Because he's got a um a supreme command of G Silicon. Are they on the table? That's not steel, does he? Uh they were blips. They will be on the table now. So so there's a CP to put in reserve for There is um an like, abominant, a magus and a patriarch. No, I didn't say gene stealers, I meant like Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they are, there's an aberrant here, for sure. Um, I didn't see where the other characters went. Um, oh, there's one here. Yeah, and there's, oh, there's, there's a blip here, you replaced with a model up there. Okay, and so they're, they're, they're fairly blips. central. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the only one that's going to be relevant here is, the, I guess it would only be the, um, Abominant for right now, because everything else is going to be psychic stuff, which isn't going to have a huge impact. Uh, is the sniper dude really going to do anything at this point? Uh, if I was him, I'd try it. Well, yeah, Take out the, um, the Kernfall. Death Jester. The Kernfall Death Jester. For sure, that is 100% what you should do. Getting him down is big, because that, that'll protect, protect so many of your characters. Yeah. So many. Okay, that's another reason why the Onus is all in Stuart. Because Simon's got the killing power in the different the different layers. The Dizzy's are good against the Zone Throats, the Venoms are good against the Gaunts, the Death Chest is good against characters. Hell, the Truth Master and the Soldier are good against characters as well. Yep. Um, I do think he's done the right thing. He's not left. Only, only worry I have is where you said that, um, where you yeah. said that the bomb is, bomb is there, yeah? Yep. There's, a, there's a big enough gap to get a Solitaire in there. Oh, massive gap. Massive gap to get a Solitaire in there. And then past that, there's a unit of Zone Throats, and then there's, I think there's another character here, and that is Malin Throat, which is, is 100% what he wants to get. Yeah. If that, if that Solitaire is there, 30 inches, I think gets him there. Potentially? I think um, potentially gets in there. Uh, that's that's twenty four. That's what they're most of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if he gets that solitaire on that melon throat, yeah. this game doesn't get past turn three. I don't think without the three getting wiped. Losing the means the melon throat's not infantry. Still gonna have twelve. Still gonna have twelve to fourteen. Still gonna have twelve attacks. Seen on twos. Winning on. No, it's gonna have ten off. attacks. Sorry. It's only ten attacks. Yeah, twelve gets me. So yeah, if it takes a wound on Overwatch, he can burn a CP for Fiery Pits of Torment, which gives him plus oh, yeah. two. That's it. Yep. So he's going to have 10 attacks going in, he's going to get 8 or 9 hits, and then he's only Strength 4 if he's doing the D3 damage from the Kiss. So he's going to win you on 5, and then the Malthrope's a Threatening Bomb. He's got Kegarax Rose, so he's Strength 6, so he win you on 3 as we're rolling. Kegarax Rose is, is, is only Strength 4, it's a standard Harkon's Kiss that's flat 3 damage versus Infantry. He gets plus 2 Strength from Fiery Pits of Torment. No, Kegarax Rose is plus 2 Strength, dude. It's not. Okay. He gets a plus two strength from the um Fiery Pits of Torment gives him plus two strength and plus two attacks when he takes a wound. So on Overwatch. Overwatch. We got the extra attacks, he went the extra strength then. Wasn't from the right. Both. Kiss by Rose. This is what we have guys on? Yep, you bring out the codex. Oh, the <laughs> this is one of my favourite armies to play, so Yeah, that's what I was saying. I'm like we're talking about how we can play here. Uh -huh. So uh has First Blood 2 happened yet, or is that coming? No, that's next weekend. Next weekend, yes. And uh, has that sold out as well? No, I think we're about 45 or 46 for that one. Um, at the ITC missions? Yeah, it's our, it's our first ITC then, yeah. Yeah. Still a solid turnout. Like, I mean, you, you've been uh, pretty lucky. Or I say lucky very loosely, obviously. You worked very hard to get there. But um, the, the WA scene was was not doing that flash for a long time there as far as, you know, large events. Um, you had a lot of regulars, but the, the, the new blood didn't appear to be really coming through. And the last couple of years, now you guys are dominating the, the, the attendance levels. Yeah, it's been really positive to see the um, reception from the community because obviously it's always a big risk with this stuff. We've invested a lot of time and money to get where we are. Um, but at the same time, the community has been really receptive to it, which is obviously why we've been able to do what we've been able to do. So, um, yeah, we've been very fortunate to have the support we have. Yep. So here you go, Adam. Torments to the Fiery Pit is a 1 CP strap. Used on Harlequin, uh, use this strategy in the fight phase before attacking with a Harlequin character from your army that has lost any wounds this battle round. Until the end of the phase, increase the strength and attacks by 2. Yep. So is that what he yeah. gets you instead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he'll, he'll take a win on Overwatch, I assume, and then, um, yeah, then so, burn the CP. Yeah. So I fucked up there because I SMS to Solitaire for the window. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, and he went into uh, Riptides, and we, which would have been on sixes. Oh, sorry, we're on five. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah it, what, it didn't matter if it's Riptides. But would it have been better if you, like, maybe I watched him kill him? That would have been good, wouldn't well, it? Ah, so. Oh, so it's just SMS. SMS, never going to kill him. Yeah, yeah so, and, and that's what I was saying. Like, I don't think he can take the Malanthrope with the Solitaire in one round. I think at that point he'd be having to either burn three more CP to fight a second time. Yeah, 100% um, he'll do that as well. 100% he'll do that. Or if he's lucky, he actually dies and then he has to burn two CP. Yeah. Um, and then he gets plus one to strength and attacks anyway from the Midnight Sorrow strap. Look, so he has, he has the ability to go in and oh, see. 
usually what he'd like to do. I don't know what this guy is. I don't know what that is. Is that just his own trope? Ah, there's characters second one. Yeah, no, that, that one, that first guy. So this guy right here. Is that just his own trope? Or is that, is that his neuro trope? So I think it's his neuro trope. Because that's his neuro. He goes in between the, between the two. Attacks everything from the neuro. And attacks everything from the neuro. Like, he probably attacks the melon trope first. Sees if he kills it. And then attacks again to the neuro trope. And then he gets two um, headhunter points. Which would be big. Yeah, so basically you've got um, the aberrant where we thought he was. Uh, we've got the Patriarch, if I'm getting that one right, and the Magus. Oh, that's the sniper dude uh, up at the top here. And the Magus dude. The Magus is uh, kind of the back center. Uh, and uh, the models around that you were pointing out before, Adam, were the Zantropes. The Zantropes? Yeah, so the Zantropes and two Neurotropes there. Yeah, so the Neurotropes are right there, right at the back, and the Zantropes are all up in that grill. So there's the Neuros right there. And uh, yeah, so there's uh, Zantropes. Uh, <laughs> little mushroom, man. All these little legs. One, two wins. Three wins, sorry, yeah. guys. Right. Any updates? Oh, yeah, what's the update on the Peter versus Lane gun? Alright, so I'm not seeing a land raider, so that's. Um, I'm assuming shock attack gun. Did one really shock attack gun, I wonder? Yeah, he does. I took him yeah. two turns to kill, though, unlike yeah. one shadow sort of turn. One more um, yeah. looking, at, um, looking at down under the pairing. He says, oh, it's game, it's only 3 1. Pete, Pete, uh, Pete says, you heard it here on Down on the Network. Uh, 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 <laughs> you heard it here on Down on the Network that yeah. land raiders are better than shadow swords. So just let you know, Josh, the, the Solitaire's come out to play. And it's getting backed up by Venom as well. Confirm <laughs> that's the Solitaire? That is 100% the Solitaire. Yeah, he's going to butcher that Aberrant. And he might pile in again and probably kill half the friggin' Termian squad if he wants. Has that Abominant got any, um, like, anything spent on it? Any Warlord traits or any upgrades or anything? Yeah, I think so. Um, double check. I... Nah. No, I don't think so. He's bare bones. I'm assuming you blitz together. <laughs> yeah, he's got pretty yeah, so we've got some witches coming out. More witches, I should say, because they were already witches out. You've unloaded a lot of witches there. Yep. So we've got a witch squad, a witch squad. So we need to put something here, and then something around this area. Uh, a bit of, oh, that's a bit of a noisy noise. Looks like he's looks like he's going all in this turn. He's put some venom over this side, and uh, another venom there. He's going all in this turn. He wants to cripple. Um, I'm not sure if he needs to do this turn. I don't think it matters. I think whenever he decides to go all in, he's going to do a hell of a lot of damage. Mm. Uh, how did he get? Oh, I guess he's got hold more. He's got hold, hold more, and he got a kill. The Stuart, and I don't know what the secondary guy is. Who is this signing? No, from the Stuart. What secondary did he get? Uh, so we can look. Turn one, uh, we got uh, Stuart got kill one, kill more, hold one, while Simon just got kill and hold one. Yep. And Simon got one Reaper, one Recon, and Stuart got one Butcher's Bell. What was the other unit kill? Um, yeah, I didn't see him kill two units. The unit of Witches? Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't see him kill two units. Uh, we'll find out later. I don't know. That's right. I thought Simon's. No, it's not doing. Does he? No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he doesn't know what he's doing, he just tells me up so well. But you, don't, you definitely don't know what you're doing. No, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never known what they're doing, guys. I'm not, one of those, I'm not always privileged to you who know what they're doing. I just live a life of confusion. So big shout out to our sponsors, Knights of Dice. Uh, head over to knightsofdice.com uh, and in the discount code of the shopping cart, use the code ANZ40K2019. How much percentage off is it? 15% off 15%. until next Friday, which is the 15th of March. Yeah. Uh, and that's up here everything except their already discounted products. Yeah. And that's, so that's solid, isn't it? Massive, massive discount. Yeah, really like when, when we were talking about it, I was like, and uh, so tired. Like 5% or so? <laughs> Honestly, I was thinking like 10% of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, like these guys, 15. yeah. Awesome, Amazing. awesome, awesome lads. Uh, Viv used to run um, the Battle Bunker oh, out of Northgate, which is my first friendly gaming store. Uh, I actually uh, was the president of the gaming club at one stage. Can you see what's happening here? He's boxing him in. He's boxing him right in. He's going to charge him with everything. He's going to try and get. So before you go, we've got two units of witches. We have two units of witches that are with shardness that are going to go here, and they're going to lock this unit down. And so then when he puts the three venoms in, they can't be shot, they can't be targeted. Um, he's, at the, he's, got, he's got venoms up here as well that are going to pin off this unit of Terminus. Yep. And once they are locked in against the. Uh, once the, the witches are locked in against them. There's nothing to do about that. Thank you for that last drop. What have you done? And then the top right, he's done the there same thing. He's pushed the Venoms up uh, to, again, put pressure there. Look. And there's some Witches uh, there, yeah. I think. Yeah, Witches there. So yeah. He's gonna, yeah, man. It's going to be a very dominant turn. I expect this turn to go for about half an hour, guys, because that's what happened with me in Simon's turn, too. He yeah. just, he's like, yeah, I'm going to take about... About a third of my time is going to be in this one turn, but it's not going to matter. Like, yeah. So Mike, he tabled me with... I think he had six minutes left on the clock. And I had 37 minutes. 
it's pretty brutal. It is what it is, man. Yeah. He used all his little time. And like, we were talking, yeah? I was like, what happens when I've got a full, a full strength rip tide left and you've dropped out? And I've got three or four times left. Oh, man. And I'm like, he still wins. No. He's going to get hold and hold more every time. Because I've got one good card, I can't get hold more often. Um, yeah, but you're going to get kill and kill, kill more. Kill and kill more and headhunter wherever I want. So, and the problem was, yeah, that one rip tide in three turns couldn't pick me up and put your skills. I one, one win venom and characters couldn't even put your skills. So bad. So bad, man. Finance violin, mate. It is. Yeah, Finance I put, violin. I put nine. You're scum. I put nine. I am tower scum. I am now. Yeah, fell scum. I put nine, two, uh, nine wounds on a death jester for a four up save. Yep. Eight plus eight. Yeah, I saw that. Plus eight four pluses, man. What can you do against such savagery? Against such reckless hate? What can fish cows? What can fish cows do? Fish cows. The tuna beef. Fish cow tuna beef, man. What do you want to call them? They have who's a gill? They're fucking fish cows. So the surf and turf. Surf and turf. Very nice. Look, I love that Master Strider comment. The bloody witches is so good. The bloody witches is so good. I love that. Because everyone, witches have been a joke for the better part of ten years. So having having witches be a playable asset in your in your army, I love that. Very very good for the game. Why may I take? So I believe he's left one character on that objective. Yeah, he has. There's one character back on that objective. I've got to assume that's his. Uh, Been up on a bit. Or Lamin. I could be Lamin. That's what Lamin's before me. I wish I knew more about Lamin when I was playing Simon. It would make sense if it was Lamin. That is the easiest kill point ever to pick up. They're not characters. They've got two wounds. The top of three. Just like, whoop, here's a kill. And doop, there's a kill more. <laughs> like, yeah. And a butcher's bill. So. <laughs> yeah, but this Tyranny Army's not going to have an easy go at killing that model, though. No, there's no, no chance to kill that model. Like, you no. can't get to it. Especially when he's not leaving his I mean, the Sanctus is probably the best bet, but I can't tell where he is on the table at the moment. It is. Uh, I'll point him out. So basically, we've got the Sanctus dude up here, who's affected on a level of a ruins. He's, he's got a bit of height. He's still got the same from there. No, that's line of sight blocking yeah. the bottom. That's yeah. that guy. Uh, he's got the um, Magus or Magus uh, in here somewhere. He's got a Patriarch here, a Broodlord here, and Aberrant here. Yep. There's um, two Neuros right next to... Uh, no, no, he does not. Uh, he has two Neuros. Uh, yeah, here works. and here. Yep. Um, they're not all over here. They're just regular zones. Oh, that's my point. Whatever. Yeah. It wasn't. You pointed at regular zones. Yes. <laughs> so that's solitaire. I'm assuming he blitzed, did he? Yeah, uh, sure. Well, you ha how far can you go without blitzing? They move 12 flat and they can still advance and charge, so it's 12 plus a d6. Or you can go but if he's blitzed, it's extra. No, that was blitz. That was, that was, that was pretty... I think you go max, max at 30 inches on a, on a blitz. With, you can move 30 if you a triple six or you burn a CP to make sure the advance is a flat six, so you're going 18 plus 36 and then you can still charge. Exactly right. I, I assume he didn't get the 30 because I was pretty sure he could, could have gone further with the 30 inches. So he's probably got like a 22, 24 somewhere. Um, which is still plenty. He's still going to go punk that aberrant. And this, this, this was, I don't know, man. I, I think that aberrant might, like with a bit of luck, that aberrant lives. I don't think so. I think aberrant, toughest, four, toughest five. Toughest five. That's easy. And it's, like, go, go. But it's also five up, feel no pain for every wound, and it reduces the damage by one. So the, the Kegorax rose only does two damage instead of three. And still, we've got six wounds? Five. But yeah, I don't think it's good odds. But you could, you're absolutely right. A bit of luck, but you could survive. Um, and also, I want to just know, see, where the, see where the witches are. They are totally going to enclose and wrap that solitaire after he's attacked. They, with the, he doesn't kill. care. Sorry? He doesn't care with that, though. No, 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 what I mean is he's going to attack with the, he's going to go in with the solitaire, attack the, uh, attack the opponent, and then he's going to pile in with the witches, and he's going to wrap around the solitaire so it can't be shot, and it can't be smited. He's going to smite to the witches first. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah. the easiest way to kill a solitaire, two smites. Bang, bang. Oh, the easiest way to kill a solitaire is let me use it. <laughs> I, I swear mine's cursed. Know. Doesn't matter what I do with him, he dies every game. Yeah. And he doesn't die spectacular, he dies to like three shuriken sure catapults or some dumb thing like that. Uh, so I like I like what um, Simon does here. See the purple dice. Every time he shoots something, he puts a purple dice in front of it to signify that it's shot. So there's no confusion. There's no fucking about. I don't know. With this many models, it makes sense to try and keep track of it in some way. Exactly right. Exactly yeah. right, man. Yeah. Look at that. You know. Did you watch my game? I did. Yeah, I got, got to watch your game at the start of today. Yeah, I didn't see it yesterday because um, I had school commitments with family. But um, yeah, I got to watch this morning's game. Nice. I wish there was a better one. I learned a lot from that game. The first thing I learned was that I don't have anywhere near enough experience in my army. There's like four, four big things I could have done uh, to make that a hell of a lot more of a game, and now I've learned all of them, so hopefully I don't make a mistake again. But oh, look, Tau, Tau versus Drakari, particularly this style of Drakari army, is always going to be a, a hit and miss. He's got, because he's got so many more tricks than I do. He's got so many more tricks than I do. Um, and it was, it was very much the case of this being, that was my, literally my sixth game of Tau, versus a guy who's probably got 600, like, you know, yeah, hundreds of games with Dark Elder. There's a massive disparity in experience there. So he knew exactly what he needed to pull me apart, and I only had a vague understanding of how to make that a game. So it was big. So he knew how to win, I knew how to make it. Maybe make it competitive. Oh, look, you can't take anything away from Simon. No, he's no, um, a hell of a general. Absolutely, so skillful. Uh, looks like we are picking up. He's demolishing this unit of Termigans. So this unit of Termigans is getting the, the pain. All the ninja weapons in the world. Yeah, <laughs> picking up the bias open. It looks like he's already he's, he's sitting out on the top, this top unit as well. So there's lots of you here. I'm just looking to see how many purples he's got down so far. I don't even think he's shooting. All the purples are getting picked up. Yep, shooting has been completed. He's actually looking pretty thin with the turn against. There can't be more than 70 left. I think this might be some... I've got to pocket some more wings in there. Yep, some more turn has been picked up. There's absolutely bugger all left. And it's charge time. The Burns are about to pile in and charge everybody. 
His man's actually aren't horrible in combat. They're actually not terrible. Actually, um, they have fours, don't they? Strength five. Can someone confirm what Ben and Tino on for me? I can't bother looking at Five. That. Base strength five, but... <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. that's at zero AP, or you can use the Blade Veins weapon that they come equipped with, which is only strength four, but it's neg one AP. Which I think is the go here, giving the determined point. Yeah, you, you, there's no point in strength five at this point. You're still in my three. Strength five. Yeah. So you take the minus one AP, deny them this Dave, and then murder. I mean, they're hitting on fours um, for dark elder vehicles, which is great. Three attacks each. Um, you know, you can probably kill two Termagorns of Venom at that stage with little to no risk. Yeah. So it looks like he's charging the riches now, and he's, I think he's declared everybody within twelve inches. Or was that the solitaire? He's, he's, he's declared everything within 12 inches. So I think he wants to take, he wants to watch him take the wound off, of course. So let's just see if he takes the bait. He could. Well, logically, you do, yeah. If you don't know about it, you're like, oh, yeah, extra wounds on a solitaire, I'll take that. Um, I like killing things. I like killing solitaires. Feels good, man. Has he, what's he gone? He's just gone to the Aberrant. But I think he's pointed to the Malanthrope as a target as well. Which he's going to try and pile in past it, and then like second activate. He can, yeah. He can pile in. He'll be looking for, for a second fight. Yeah. So good, man. Shit. <laughs> so good. The good part about it is, even if he whiffs against the Aberrant, the Aberrant then pops him. Because he's midnight, sorry, he can just burn the 2 CP and fight again before he dies anyway. I don't think there's any, I think there's any way the Aberrant makes it out of this without dying. So you, you, I don't know, man. Like, I've just been playing about in Math Hammer, and the Solitaire barely kills him, on average. Well, that's what I mean. It's just whether he needs to attack him twice or not. I think he kills him no matter what. Yeah. It's just whether he has to burn the CP. Of course, it's really yeah. good for... It's, really good for um, it's actually probably better for him not to kill him, and make him burn the 3 CP, and then pick him up in his turn with smites in his Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you don't actually want to kill him with your Abominant, but the chances of that Abominant killing the Solitaire with only 3 attacks hitting on 4s, um, exactly right. pretty low. Three plus if he, I mean, if he sneaks one through and gets a decent, like a couple of hits through with the, um, I'm assuming he's got the heavy power hammer. Oh, he's just stock. So he's just stock. He's just stock. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of combat. This is such a long turn. We might have yeah, to get a, a, a timer check. So it looks like Simon's on 49 minutes left, and Stuart is. Are we going to get Matt number one, Marisoli? So the. Give us an offer on the game as well. Um, that abominant could kill that solitaire. <laughs> Not likely, but. Well, is that the aberrant could, but probably won't? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, so it's strength 12, neg 3, d6 damage, and any ones or twos count as 3 for damage. Yeah, 3 plus for damage, that's pretty good. Uh, but it's three only 3 attacks hitting on 4s. Yeah, actually, that's not good. So, you know. So, yeah, it could, but I don't think it will. So, an hour 8 minutes left on the, on the board for uh, Stuart, and 48, you said? Yeah. 105, Stuart, 48. So, that's what happened in my game. So, in, in, my, in my turn 2, uh, Simon literally used about 35, 40 minutes. And, but he killed, he killed like, he killed him tied up three quarters of my army. So it doesn't really matter in the end. Um, it's exactly like Simon's game with Liam. Yeah. He's yeah. going to give uh, Stuart and Liam things to kill this turn. Yeah. Stuart will probably kill most of them, but he'll spread him so thin. Spread so thin. Uh, yeah. yeah. Big insights from the number one Australian player in the <laughs> player Australia. Best Australian player in the world. He <laughs> is the true. number one Australian player in the world. Technically, that's true. <laughs> well, arguably. Eric's pretty good. Yeah, we're guys. Bye, guys. Sorry, brother. You got again, Adam Napier from South Australia heading off. See that? Face. Is this is true. Out of the good round of the event. Just like I did. <laughs> I dropped out for noble reasons to, to do coverage. I actually missed it. Mate, actually, I I've, been, I've had uh, multiple people ask me last night at dinner, um, would I prefer to stream or play? And I said, I don't want to never play again. Like, I still yeah. want to play. But if I had a choice, I'd pick stream every time. Right, right now, I pick streaming. It's, it's why so I'm much here. fun. Yeah, it's so good. We get to trash talk. Oh, and oh boy, do we trash talk. How many, how many tournaments do you think you're I think 60 to 70 a day. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's half, they're half gone. Yeah, those, those Venoms did a huge amount of work in the shooting phase and they just they came off in handfuls. Matt, it's two turns and he's, he's killed like 60 to 70, 60 to 70 Termians. And the first turn, so the, none of the Trakari's have always been an army to deal with monster style, you know, mass horde armies. They do really well because their poison just is so efficient in that regard. Man, they were so good to me last time. that with witches the way Simon has, they just do work. Yeah. So he had five Venoms shoot one of my Riptides on three wounds. Yep. I think statistically he does like one wound through my two plus. He did four because I rolled, I rolled um, and bam, that's the difference. Like, just the fact you're just laying enough, 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 and yeah, constant, just goes down. He's got... Yeah, looks like he's cleared that, so he's cleared a big, big bubble of Termagants on the right to those two top two Venoms. Uh, looks like he's piling it into the middle. Man, they might not be... Like, it looks like there's only going to be like one unit of Venoms left at the end of this. Uh, we will also notice the Aberrant is gone, and the Solitaire has piled in his just Consolite, so that force me a chance. So the Solitaire is right there, guys. So the Abominant has been hunted, that's the Solitaire right there. And so he's, he's, that's before he got, he got there with his Consolite after killing the Abominant. Yep. He's going to make it a Malator. He's going to make him his next yep. activate. And that's just whether or not he pulls him down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're in five, Reasonably decent. I mean, it's not going to fight back well, but it's going to be relatively durable. Yeah, they actually are quite durable. We, we hear they're going to fall plus involved. I don't know if that's confirmed. I'm just going to double check that. I know, that, I know, I know they're tough as five or six minimum, which doesn't matter for the solitaire either way as we minimum twice. And then it's. I, I thought he had seven or six or seven weeks, but it turns out he might have eight. In which case. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking it up now. One sec. Plus. If you've got four plus involved, the solitaire's not going to get to him. Unless he dies. So the Melanthrope. I don't know either. is uh, tough as five, nine wounds. Involved? Um. Not that I can see. It's a 5-up armor save. Mm. That is in the warp and synapse. Minus one to hit at range. 
Um, it's, it's interesting coin then. So he deals a four plus. He deals a, a four plus. He deals a mortal wound at the end of the fight phase to enemy units. Doesn't matter. Um, so he's he gonna, reroll ones, and that's it. He's literally gonna have his nine wounds, and he's six plus. He's got six up armor, six up feel no pain to protect his nine wounds from ten attacks hitting on twos, winning on fives, rerolling. Five. He, he might. He might live. Yeah, I think he lived. I think he lived. Yeah, I think he lived. <laughs> Are you supposed to be coming through here? Yeah? Because I can't hear you. Cool. What time is it in WA? I don't know. What time is it in WA? Nah. Just before lunchtime, just before 12. Nice. Would you say this is Basque to the future? I shouldn't have found that funny. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, he gets points for that. It was pretty good. That's pretty good, man. <laughs> no, but, uh, I reckon the Malanthrope's going to survive this pretty comfortably. Yeah, I think he takes like six wins. Five or six wins. I think he's just fine. Um, oh, look, I reckon he's probably alive on one or two, is All my right. guess. So doing the math, so 10, 10 attacks hit on twos, so he's probably going to get eight hits, wounds on fives re-rolling. So three, he's probably going to get five wounds, and they do D3 each. So let's say there's ten wounds, six by six. Probably. I, I work it out to be seven to eight. Yeah, probably take seven, yeah. Actually, you're right, you're probably right. So Simon's already won the Masters, he's going to go back to back. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, man. Uh, cracking me up too much. It's just too, it's too the humor's too good. Uh, also, we've got some termagants piling, which means all the attacking has been done, because shit knows you're not going to interrupt with termagants. Man, so every termagant in front of his zone throws has been cleared at this point, with the exception of one little nugget. One little nugget of termagants here, and it looks like he's got a 30 man left, probably at the back here. I'm not sure if that's another unit, or that's one, or that's one big one. Such brutality. I mean, what, at this point, what has Simon even lost? This is, this is literally one of the best matchups Simon could have actually asked for, though. He's built to do this. This was always going to be bad for the Tyranids. So when, when I saw Simon's list, I was like, this is a good Cancom list, because Cancom was dominated by Hordes. And I was, and I was looking at the field for the Masters, and I was like, I'm not sure how, how it's going to go here. But we didn't have... The, the armies that... So the one army that I thought would have whole axed him was Knights. I thought, he can't scratch the Knights, especially not a 2-plus Knight. Like, 2-plus Knight, just, he, he, does, he can shoot his whole army at it for 6 turns, and he won't half-kill it. Um, no, the, Ravage, the Ravagers with disintegrated cannons. That's right. And Archon backing them up will threaten a knight, but they're not, not likely going to kill it in a turn. It'll take two or maybe three to do it. Like one Crusader knight kills a Ravager in a half in a turn, which means two turns, the Ravagers are gone. And yeah, exactly. That's just one Crusader. Um, so, I, and I thought that would be the one where this list would fall down, but I think he's played knights. I think he only played a single knight, and I think he just walked over it, because, well, he's here. He played, he played three knights. He played three knights. Three knights, one of assassins, any table. Simon the Magician. Simon the Magician. If you didn't hear that, he played against Triple Knights and Seven Assassins. Eleven Assassins. Eleven Assassins. Triple Knights. Oh, yeah, I know the list. Yeah, yeah. And he tabled it, apparently. So. <laughs> Big Bear is the old Assassins. Yeah, it's got the new Assassins. That list gets so much scarier, like, next week. Terrifying. <laughs> Did you want to jump on? Sit on top. You're going to be here. Move over. You'll have to get up when Diffie gets back. Oh, okay. No, no, you go. <laughs> Trolls. I look good from this angle. This is my good side. <laughs> yeah. All right, man number one, Marisol. He's just jumped in the hot seat. For our lovely viewers, you deserve the best. He's the best, according to the rankings. Oh, Eric's better. Us, us, who, know, <laughs> us who know better. Like, yeah. I'm just watching you guys now with the time delay playing friggin' um, chair tag. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, you you with your L5s see what's in the clock? Uh, um, not, not now, but look, I, I would imagine we're still in Simon's turn. He was down to 48 before. He's probably down to 30. just, oh, no, I think uh, just 30, over 40 30. minutes. I mean, yeah. yeah uh, still won't abuse much more. But look, Switzerland so hasn't taken anything away from Simon, right? His turn's going to take longer than Simon's last whole army. So when Simon hasn't lost any damage output, any efficiency, he's lost the witches. That's it, man. Yeah. Like, he'll, he'll lose some Venoms here. He'll yeah. lose three, maybe three here, but... This is, I, I believe this is the Solitaire hitting against the, um, yeah, this will be the Solitaire versus the Malanthrope. Here comes the reroll to wounds. Yeah, it's got to be a Solitaire. Nothing else is rerolling to wind like that. Looks like he's only got three wounds. Uh, four, four, five, five wounds. Five wounds. Six ups. Ooh. Saved. Did he save three? He's going to save P1. I saved two. Oh no. He saved three. No way. So he failed two? Yep. Yeah, so the Malanthrope definitely lives. So all Here's his damage, uh, damage is out. Oh no, that must be... Well, he's taking six. Yeah, he's, take, he's taking six. It must have been three flat. Yeah, so how's it doing three flat? Should be D3 against the Malanthrope? No, uh, they're D3s. Unless the Malanthrope's infantry. No, uh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe as, it may very well have the infantry keyword. I'm yeah. just going to quickly double check while we're here. No, it doesn't. It's a monster. So it's D3, it's not flat three. Okay. We'll see if we might not be attacking, maybe attacking the Neurothrope. Who knows? Because the Neurothrope could be in base contact with there as well. It looks like he didn't take that many anyway, so it's probably not going to matter in the scheme of things. That's a good result, Stuart. It is. Looks like he's attacking back, he's done uh, two wins. Three ups. Yeah. I think he's failed one. Yep, he's failed one. He's got two attacks and he's just some more venoms. And so it looks like, yeah, looks like the Solitaire's taking a wound or two. Yep, looks like he's taking at least one wound. Well, the Malanthrope's D3 in combat. Yeah, that'll be the D3 rolled out. Well, it's just about to smite. It gets smited out anyway. Yeah, he's going to smite out. Does he, does he attack when he dies from smites? What's that? Can he attack when he dies from smites? Or is it just fighting in the five phase? No, it's done when you kill in the five phase. Yeah, I, I thought so. But because that would be, that'd be crazy. So good. But mind you, he'd be insane to stay in combat with him. Oh, absolutely. You can go for that. Mind you, it's funny when they, they shoot you with infusion crystals when you fall back. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> but what is, how does, how does Stuart get some points out of this position? 
well, look, let's be real, right? we're playing on top table for the win here. And actually, if you lose, it actually doesn't matter. Like, if you lose, you're out. Yeah. Well, actually, you get second regardless. Yeah. That's why I'm sitting here. <laughs> well, actually, sorry, sorry, from this point of view, do you not fucking dare. <laughs> 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 um, if, if, if you lose, you get second. It actually doesn't matter how many points you get, right? Yeah. So Stuart Mason has to look at the points. He's, he's got say, in the how can I make you know a big ballsy play to try and get a win? Yeah. Because it doesn't matter how big you lose. There's one point win, a 20, 30 point win, doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, so look, he's still got all his zone throws. He's, oh. What's holding him 51? I th is, that just, is that just a venom and a handful of witches? Red Lord's down there. I think the solitaire was attacking the Red Lord. The one um, on the sort of the street on the top left of the camera. So, I, so I'll just tell you what's happened here, guys. So, oh, there's, so there's a venom on their mask. Yep. So the he was attacking the Broodlord with the solitaire. He killed the Broodlord. The Broodlord attacked on death. Killed the solitaire. And now it's whether he attacked with the solitaire now. And for the third, gets the third attack. And he's probably what he wanted. Yeah. It's probably what Simon freaking wanted, putting the solitaire in. And now is he going to attack with the solitaire again? I don't like How did the Broodlord fight? He fought on death. Oh, okay. That makes yeah. sense. <laughs> he killed the Broodlord. Had six, which way had the six damage against him? And then, and then he paid two CP. Killed the solitaire. And it just doesn't look like Simon's paid for the solitaire attack to a fight on death. Probably because he's done the math and knows he can't kill them. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, but there's no point. I think he needs a CP now anyway. He can't have any left. We haven't got an update there, but... Yeah. Oh, name it's, that. it's two for the Solitaire to fight once more. Yeah, he's already paid three for the fight again. So he'd be putting five rounds that Solitaire this turn. And he, he's not going to be killing the Mountain Throat. So no, he's, oh, he's, no. probably, he's probably just giving it off as a bad, as a bad goat. But he's got two hand points for that one Solitaire. So I think that's a hell of a trade. Oh, oh definitely. Well. No. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Right. Some for us. So, can you confirm for us that he attacked the board, killed it, the board attack, killed the solitaire? Uh, the question is, did the board attack and kill the solitaire? The melon side got the job done. So, so the solitaire fought three times in total, um, but now he's got reroll ones, pretty much army wide. Who is the melon side killed something? Mm. Okay. So he did burn 5 CP on it then? Yeah, he did pay yeah. 5 CP. So, but, that, I don't, that doesn't say the status quo. It's just interesting that the Malachi pulled down the solitaire. Yeah. So he must have rolled shooting on the, on the 3 up. Did he kill the Broodlord then? Um, oh, but he just killed the Broodlord. The Broodlord didn't attack. The Malachi just killed the solitaire. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've got a question. Uh, Master Strider, how do you reckon Custodes would go in the Master's meta? Yeah, well, yeah, we're alright. Yeah, yeah. right. right. Is there the rules for that? Weren't there the new um, four board release with the Calvis tanks and the Orions? Yeah. yeah. Well, the Orion with minus two to hit is freaking phenomenal. Absolutely. Godly, Those accelerated guns on the Calvis tanks are insane. Dude, what's the little one? Oh, the pal the pal the pal the Calvis? Uh, so for those interested between uh, Pete Patel and Liam Hackett, uh, Gina just killed seven big enough. Pete what? Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, Gilman had a swing and killed seven Mega Knobs. Oh! <laughs> Ouch. Ooh, what a baller. Um, uh, I don't want to jinx anything, but it looks like it's not. A, I mean, that sounds like a great story, but, but he's in massive trouble. Yeah. <laughs> But that was the morale boost, though. He's playing Rose on the Grey. <laughs> moment. Looking at the scorecard, turn three, it's nine to six in Liam's favour. Yeah, it's looking like Liam's only getting a clock. So Liam uh, took out the Land Ready Crusader, he's taken out the Centurions, um, which has pretty much left Gilliman, some scouts, Hellion, and the Banner Dude. But Gilliman looks like he's just going to solo the rest. Ha! Dude, shock attack guns pick up Crusaders, shock attack guns pick up Centurions. Yeah, Gilliman. I think I'm Gilliman as well. He's got to roll the 11. Yeah. Well, how many attacks has... Gilliman's got six attacks, yeah? So, so, so Michael's trying to protect things, and he's thinking he's So, that's yeah. going well. Yeah, yeah. So, he must have fixed his half-point damage on four. So, there is a chance he makes a six-up save to save one of them. So, look, seven's probably on the better side of the averages. Hitting on twos are rolling, winning on threes. No, winning on twos are rolling. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so he's going to get seven, seven wounds through, and then you should make one, six up, yep. and then so six dead, and then maybe the D3's knocked up another one. So, seven's probably about perfect. Uh, but just back to Master Strider's point, I think Custos would have done really well here. Uh, with the right, the right Custos list, would have done extremely well here. Maybe it's one easy. Custos, maybe it's some Custos. Stop stopping army. Stop coming through. Dude, I'm not looking to tower for the next like, six months. But post, post ATC, it's a big brave world out there, guys. It is. Uh, so I've had a number of questions uh, in the chat. I've had messages come to me about... These bad boys, so I can, you know, hold it upright. Uh, down on the network. Um, three inch diameter, so three inch radius, six inch diameter uh, objective. So if you're on it, you're on it. You can see them on the stream right now. We're selling them for $40. Uh, contact us at uh, our Facebook page. Uh, we will still give you, you know, invoice and all that sort of stuff. But um, we haven't really worked out like a shop front just yet. It's our first merchandise we're looking at selling. Um, mate, that sticks. That's actually pretty good. All right, so this sticks to the table. It sticks to your shirt. You just need to be a, have a, a more robust chest. Some chesticles like I do, and it's got plenty of, mate, plenty of traction. So they're 40 bucks a pop um, uh, for a set of six. They're numbered one to six. So the numbers are a little less relevant for ITC, but those playing ECC and format, Maelstrom, and, and, and all that sort of stuff. Very relevant. 
Uh, so yes, they're pretty. They feel good. Yeah, there's no harm in having numbers on them anyway. Say again, sorry? There's no harm in having numbers for other formats anyway. No, there isn't. We, um, we were umming and well, so we're umming and ahhing over it because I can tell you now, having numbers on them make them cost more. A lot more. Um, just having the same, just the same cost would have saved us like a, lot. a third, a yeah, quarter but with of the, the price. With the ETC format, it was a, it was a no-brainer. Had to, had to make it relevant for every, everybody, every mission. Yeah. It's the only way to do it. We don't want to give you guys any subpar. We don't want to do subpar anything. Yeah. So, uh, the best, the best. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we have Matt number number Schmuckasoli. Matt Schmuckasoli. I'm making my my missions making Matt number Schmuckasoli. Uh, so we are we are also going to be bringing out some more merch. Uh, so for those that are on the uh, Patreon page, so uh, Patreon.com/slash Down Under underscore Network. Patreon, you get discounts and stuff. You do. You do. Um, there is a magic number that's less than forty that we haven't come up with yet, <laughs> um, but so, it, it will be discounted. It will be, it will be, and it won't be like a thirty nine ninety nine. Like no, we'll, no, we'll give you a proper we'll discount. Give you a proper discount. Uh, and if, you, if you are supporting us, you deserve kickbacks. You deserve you deserve discounts. You deserve yep. you deserve you know love. fairies to sing you to sleep. <laughs> you deserve your farts to not stink. You deserve like the woman, the, the partner of your dreams, to want you. Mate, <laughs> mate, I know what you've been on, but uh, just get a Patreon. Yeah, oh, what happened? Didn't let Morris totally subside. All this and more can be yours. Um, yes, head over to patreoncom slash down underscore down under underscore network. Mate, that's a mouthful right there. Down underscore network. Yeah. Uh, and yes, there are multiple tiers. Um, simple as five bucks, uh, right up to currently twenty-five bucks. Uh, we we'll give you stuff. You'll love it. We love it. Uh, and yeah, if you like what we're doing, you know, we're pretty much putting all those proceeds back into the channel. More gear. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to a quick update on the scores. But obviously, they have not updated to CP because there's no freaking. We know Simon spent five in his last turn. Yes. Minimum spent five. So Simon's already on three Reaper points at the yeah. end of turn two. Yeah. Uh, he's got two Headhunter points and two Recons. Yep. That's the Broodlord. The Broodlord and the Abominant went down. There's two other points. Yep. And the two the Recons, he's always going to get Recon. He's been chucking stuff in there to get every yeah. time. Um, uh, so Stuart uh, is already at the bottom of turn two. Yeah. Uh, so Stuart obviously hasn't put his scores in yet. Yeah. Uh, well, what do you think he's going to get? He should get killed. He'll definitely get killed. Uh, he might get killed more. I doubt he's going to get killed more. I think Simon's picked up three units this turn. Look, well, he yeah. can pick up three units, especially if they're just. If just by, so he's picked up a soldier already. So if he picks up uh, two units of witches and a venom, he'll get two more. He's, he's going to be holding the equal amount. He's still got three turnings left on that left objective. He's yep. got one point. And the, the um, upper upper middle, but well, the top right objective, that's locked up. That's his. So he's not, no one's going to get four more. I don't think. I think he's going to cancel that Simon's plus one there. But it's just a question who gets killed more. Because yep. right now Simon's going to is running away with the secondaries. I think he's always going to. But it's it's just a case of Stuart keeping up with the whole team. Yep. He's just going to stay in touch and hope something miraculous comes away at this point. Uh, and Mike, if you want to uh, try that link again, um, I've just changed some settings, so you should be able to post it. It should work this time. Yeah, we generally turn um, links off uh, for the chat, but... Uh, just because you get spammed sometimes. Yeah. Somebody's just starting and just shilling their own channel, like, oh, come watch this, come watch this, come watch this. It's a bit lame. Ah, uh, fair enough. But, I was trying to be helpful. But no, we love you. We, 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 we post it. We just added it so you can do it. Um, so there's a link also to uh, the current game if you want to keep track of the scores. Um, and if you're interested in the leaderboard and want to see army lists uh, for other players, you can also find them on downhunterparents.com and go to the ANZ 40k Masters uh, and check that out. Um, I think I put some links up a little earlier, but I'll do it again. So if you are um, interested in any events in WA or just keeping up with the WA meta or just what's going on, uh, you can head over to Objective Secured's uh, Facebook page uh, and they do a podcast every fortnight and the alternating fortnight they do a live stream. Yep. I think that's Wednesday nights, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, yeah. We alternate. We, we do the Wednesday release of the podcast and then every second Wednesday we swap it and do the, um, the live. Yeah. Uh, for those over in the East Coast, at the moment there's a, a bit. Well, there's a three-hour time difference, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. The summertime sucks. I mean, we, we try and bring it forward to an eight o'clock start locally, which means it is eleven o'clock on the East Coast at the moment. Yeah. Whereas, um, obviously, uh, once the uh, once the hour savings gone in the East Coast uh, or some of the East Coast, uh, we're back on a more reasonable time difference. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's been many times uh, where I'm uh, getting ready for bed, doing my teeth, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna listen to Mike and Emma. <laughs> I say hello. They say hello back, and then uh, it's what a, what a wholesome exchange. It is. <laughs> I tell you what, those um, those are some of the highlights of our gaming weeks because the um, the interaction we get is really good and we get lots lots of random questions and we get lots of um, sort of philosophical questions and then um, we get guys. I've got a photo one of the guys shared. It's got us in the background on a computer screen talking because he's watching us while he's painting. But instead of just saying I'm I'm doing it, he actually sent us a photo of him doing it. So that was kind of cool. That's awesome. Um, so some things to note about where this table state is. So right now Stuart's just holding on to his objective. There's three guys there. They're dead as shit next turn. They are nothing, so dead. Which will pretty much cut off this, this side of the board. Everything everything here will be 100% controlled by Dark Elder and you can't contest below this line either. So that's three sides of the board, it's essentially dead to him. And on top of that, he's hemmed in there. So literally, this is the Xenos. So ZX, I don't know what that symbolizes, I just made that up. Somebody's up on Xenos, I'll be from moment there. Um, <laughs> so literally, so he's, he's only got any influence on the game within this sphere. Because he hasn't got the long range shooting. No. He smites only hit the closest targets. So he's completely bottled in. So everything, that is, this is the only realm of the board where the tyranny have any sway. And they do have a lot of kill points they can pick up. They do have a lot of ways they can stay relevant in the game. Yeah. But there's no way they can get in front, to, to my point of view. No, with Simon holding at least two, looks like three actually. Um, it will be so. It will be three. He's got. Also, he's got three turn on that uh, top left objective, which is no way they survive for the next turn. So that'll be that'll start being uh, hold more every turn for Simon. Yep. Yeah. 
it looks like Kuchma even invents zone threats onto it. But then, I mean, Sami can just walk out some upset onto it, and it doesn't matter. Like, he can just start to put an upset, five, five man, upset unit onto it, this turn. Are you killed down? Another five. Are you killed down? Another five. They do that every turn, rest of the game, very easily. Most of, it, most of his venoms still have, they still have three to capitalize, they haven't left venoms yet. And I'm betting he's still got one or two units of uh, which is out of the dungeon. But, yeah, all the power inside his board. Um, I think we've done the psychic phase. There's a couple of cards down on the table to represent some psychic going off. Some of the fun things that Stuart can do is things like one control of venom. I was going to take out you know witches for him. That could be pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> the problem is though, his witches are tied up in the middle of the table. Can you circle this area for us? I sure can. I have the power. So he's got, he's got, he's got two venoms and two units of witches and uh, locked up in there with that. What remains of that unit of terminal? There's currently about four guys left in there, which will get picked up probably uh, at the bottom of this turn before this next start next one. And that is stopping uh, those witches from being shot. Which right now the only witches on the board. So there's no easy kills here. The only kills on the table are freaking venoms. The only options. And he does not have good ways to kill venoms out of smites. And even smites he gets a six up to no pain against. Yeah. So it's rough. It's very rough. Poor, poor Stewie. I want better for the young man. He's, he's a good, good, good dude. The kid. The kid. The myth, the myth, you know, the man. We call him Stewie. <laughs> you can update from Remy Diff. Alright, yeah, so we've got uh, three witches and a succubus. Um, currently in combat with um, the Dawn Screen. Uh, we have uh, uh, Lemayan uh, in the center of the table. Shit, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. There is a Lemayan. And right here. then down at the bottom right hand side, you've got the uh, double pistol gene steel character. Where? Sorry, the bottom uh, right. The bottom right. Yeah. Point to it. Did he summon it? Oh, yeah, there he is. No, he's there. He, he, he's in the ambush. That's I'm just looking at the armor list. Do you mean the sniper? Yeah, the sniper. No, no, there's a sniper dude further up. That's something else. So he must have either summoned it or. He I don't had, know if uh, he had 60, 70 points. Yeah, 70 yeah points. That's, a, that's a Kalamorph 60. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yep. Uh, and then he's just deep struck the uh, Rippers down the bottom right hand corner as well. I'm not sure if he's this objective. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we've got a Kalamorph here, we've got a Lemian here. Um, what else do you do? That Kalamorph actually poses a threat to a lot of those characters. He does, he does. He can go in there and get a few head points to spirit. Uh, I'm going to have more we'll just making sure you're super build. I think you can find it. Uh, 40 minutes each. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, why not make one? Why not make one? Stop! <laughs> 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 it's pretty black in the background. It's funny. <laughs> 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 There's a bear in it. Uh, so Simon is actually on board CP. He's on CP. He, he blew his load in the first few turns. So I'll, see if I can get a, I'll see if I can get a confirmation of the CP at some stage. Well, um, Simon fast is down to zero. Is what, sorry? Simon from zero CP, according to the new doctor. Oh, they've updated it? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. How's it going, Yak Hunter? PD baby. PD the Falcon baby. <laughs> PD the Falcon baby. It's good. Uh, baby Falcon. Uh, Huh? Yeah, kind of join us. Does he want to? Let him know. Uh, Pete, do you want to join in? Would you like to jump in on Discord and start chit-chatting with us? Let us know if you're able. We'd love to have you. Was he on the join us yesterday at all? No, he's working. Uh, balls. Do you know how many times you say that? A lot. It's a lot. It's funny, because yeah. it's in our um, highlight reel. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> so um, we did a video for Arc40K <laughs> to promo uh, down on the network. And in it, the very first bit was basically saying, yeah, we do live events, and you'll see in that, we've got the objective secured banner behind us for our very first event. Yep. So you get a bit of a shout out in our first stream. I'll well, have to get that off yeah. you then so I can put it in our videos. Will do. Thank you. Thanks, my man. Grazie, um, grazie. No worries. Not you see this stuff, you uh... <laughs> so, um, Yak Hunter is going to jump on in five. So we're going to have Pete the Falcon Baby. I call him the Pete the Falcon Baby. So I want to call him Baby. I want to call him, want to call him Baby. Petey Baby. But his name is the Falcon. Oh. So now he's a Baby Falcon. 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 Um, Sounds like a mob boss. Yeah, so uh, we did a video. Uh, you know what? I should probably play it at some stage. I probably can do that. We're going to the top 10. We're going to top 10 three. So I was just moving some guys out from the stage. Reaper, Reaper. Reaper's at the bottom right. It's 4.30 finish We finished at 4.30. Uh, so that is an hour and, and a half. Yeah, hour and okay. 20. I'm going to yell, so I'm muting for a sec. According to down to pairings, it's one hour forty-eight to go. Uh, yes, we started around half an hour early uh, because basically we had a big plan, a big plan, which was um, <laughs> my game wouldn't be over in two hours. <laughs> yeah, so we started the Masters round an hour after the Open with the mindset that the Open players could see like the dying hour, like the last hour, the real meat and potatoes of that game. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I played too quickly, guys. This guy got tabled uh, before four turns. Four turns. Four turns. Um, uh, no, sorry. Yeah, four turns. Yeah. yeah. So we played quick. We played quick. Yeah. Okay. The thing is though, I had, I had forty minutes left on my clock. He had six. <laughs> yep. So that's why. But yes. So uh, in the end, uh, there was a few people that actually finished their game after these guys. Yeah, yeah, we finished before them. Um, but I thought we should update <laughs> did you drop, that. Did you just drop a damn Martin. Right? Just drop a damn Martin. Guys. I did not drop a damn Martin. Totally did. Ah. Finished the game after these. No, I didn't. Did. No way. Totally did. Man. I said these guys. There's no way. Did. I'm a good boy. Ah. My mummy says so. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, let's know when you're ready to go, Pete. We'll jump in Discord. You still here, much? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I haven't lost him. How, I mean, that's a possibility. How would, like, you, how would you squeeze points out of Simon right now? He's like getting blood out of a stone. 
getting milk or, or some kind of porridge out of an avocado. Yeah. There's, a, there's an analogy for you. That's not even a ripe avocado. It's like, it's like a rocket. <laughs> it's like an armadillo testicle. Mate, mate, what are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, what is even happening here, guys? I mean, hey! hey! Peter, my baby falcon. How you doing, dude? I'm living the dream. Living the dream. All right, so Pete, uh, meet Mike from Objective Secured. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm living, living the dream, like you just said. All right, now I'm going to have to uh, multitask like champ and get that Chapter Tactics logo probably up there. Unless it's 40k stats logo we got. I don't, think you, I don't think 40k stats really has a logo. Am I right in saying that? You are correct. i got to pay somebody to, to make me win. Um, yeah, just get a Falcon. <laughs> give me a holler. Yeah. I'm sure I can sort you something out. Um, uh, it might not be a, a paid quality, but uh, I'm sure we can work something out. I've got a great designer here who's a, who's a gamer who comes to our events regularly who can probably help you out. Oh, awesome. Uh, I have a friend that uh, works in the uh, cartoon industry right now, so I was going to get her to throw something together for me. Fantastic. Uh, have you, how much of this game have you caught, Pete? Um, I only just started tuning in. I tuned into the last game and got confused and thought that was the last one because it was the finals for the... Yeah. Um, yep. yeah. So, so I was like, oh, God damn it, I missed out uh, watching Adam get beat, but luckily there is another round. So. Well, I'm sorry you got to see that one, but hopefully you enjoyed this one. <laughs> <laughs> it was a you might have joined at the wrong time because this is looking pretty bleak for... Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to be used to watch my game back because it really showed that I only had like a handful of games with that army. Just, just All yeah. right, I'll, have to, I'll do an update in a second. Simon, Simon but, played uh, me like a fiddle. We're just getting some logos strapped onto you guys. Oh, you mate, mate, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna love it. Yeah, so, Gil Gilliman on table 2, technically. I just killed 5 more Megan Ops in combat. He's killed 12 on his own. He's killed 12 by himself. Just, just killed him 12 Megan Ops of the 30 that Liam's brought. Oh my god. Did Liam mob them all up, or are they three separate units? They mob them all up. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 there are two, there are two units. Okay, so we got 20 yeah, to 10. Yeah, 20 to 10. 20 to 10. Yeah. 20 to 10. So, let's remember that list from uh, KenCon. Pete? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I saw, is that, that was what he was playing yesterday, too. I, I watched part of his, one of his games there. Yeah, so it's 30 Megan Ops. Uh, he's just like, 20 is good. Yeah, he's got to be better, right? Well, we're not storing anymore. We're going to talk. Apparently 30 isn't. I, think, I actually think 20 is better. You can, you can, I agree. You have, you have, well, he gave up the looters to do it, didn't he? Yeah, he got the looters off the tank buses to do it. So he's actually made a couple well, of The looters don't matter the tank buses to throw us. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you want two different units to rely on, on so having, much CP. Uh, rock, oh, it's all those shields. You don't yeah. want to have looters and uh, Megan Ops and Pokemon rock shields. Yeah. The looters are decent without needing all the strats and CP anyway. Not too many people talking. We are. We've, suddenly, we've just got four, four people on this side, two people on the stream. Let's try and make sure, uh, um, yeah, special guests. <laughs> so, uh, no, 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 I'm good. I'm just suggesting, um, let's just... Uh, all right, so we're going we're to recap from the end of turn two. So Stuart's popped up to eight points with Simon and 11. So Simon didn't get any kill or hold noise. So Stuart jumped from four to eight. So he's got kill, hold, and hold. They couldn't have gotten hold more, so it must have been kill more. Which surprises me. How did he kill four things in that turn? Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll pull up the, uh, the website and see what he scored up. Which is so freaking handy, man. It's so handy to be able to pull up the scorecard and, and whenever you want and see exactly what they're on, what they scored. All right, I think, I think, at least for like a, the, a 20 second job, I think you're going to like what you've got <laughs> coming your way, Falcon. Um, okay. Diffy, Diffy's a magician, and he can. Get, <laughs> I, I can talk crap for like three minutes at the drop of the hat. There is so much shit he can get done in those three minutes. It's, it's astonishing. That's hilarious. Uh, we're gonna go with now. I haven't. Got to assume the way Stuart got Killmore was around um, the Solitaire's death plus. Um, he must have killed like one of those little units of witches. There must have been um, like little easy kills yeah. looking around for him. Actually, I'm looking at it right now. So we had that unit of um, witches in the middle. There's, there's five guys. There's four or five witches and a succubus there. He could have smited both of those out and then plus the solitaire going down. But he would have mm -hmm. to one more as well because I think I think Simon. Well, the Kellamorph dropped in. Oh, yeah, and I can't, I can't imagine that was just dropped willy nilly where it was. There was a there was a Lemian just pissing in the wind in the middle of the board. That would have been an easy pick up as well. Yeah, which is an easy kill for Kellamorph. Oh yeah. Just the Terminus. Terminus just picked that up. Um, so yeah. That looks pretty good. Let's go with that. We're, we're low going up, guys. All right, so this is a last minute little uh, ad, so let's, let's see how that goes. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I haven't paid for any copyrights on that logo, no. so uh, my bad. <laughs> 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 Hilarious. <laughs> Uh, I'll take it. I'll take it for sure. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> now the national symbol. You gonna get that tattooed? Like somewhere. The Falcon inside of TV. Inside of TV. On his I'll shoulder. Yeah, I'll get. I'll get it right on my left arse cheek. No. <laughs> Perfection. Get him with Adam's room. No, no, We have. Whoa. We actually have a. We have a player <laughs> who's to my left, to your right. Um, that lost a bet. Um, and in losing said bet, he has another man's name tattooed. Which butt cheek? Which right? Which right, isn't it? Left, 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 left butt cheek. cheek has another man's name on it now. <laughs> it is what it is. That's <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> we, we heard that story and saw the tattoo firsthand when I first met those gentlemen <laughs> many years ago now. Exactly right. It's a One hell of introduction to you. bets in Australia. I would take any bet. <laughs> so looks like he's tightening the noose on his own throats. More than anything else, I think he just doesn't want them moving out of that bubble. He just wants to keep him in there. There are not any objectives there. Just yeah. keep him in there. Maybe smite through venoms to get to anything and just keep upsetting all the objectives. He's lined up with what looks like you know, the Cabalites on that um, objective to the left, which is exactly what we thought he was going to do. Uh, and it looks like he's actually got some upsets on the one to the right yeah, as well. So, so it's quite possible he starts, bringing, he starts racking up the, the bonus this round too. Turn two, um, we saw Simon get kill one, hold one. Uh, and we saw 
uh, if I just go back for a sec, yeah, and Stuart get kill one, kill more, and hold one. Yep. So obviously, um, kill one, kill more, hold one. Yeah. Uh, so what have you got secondary there? What you... uh, butcher's bill. Oh, of course. Of so course he's, on, he's on two for butcher's bill, yep. uh, while Simon's got uh, basically kill one, hold one, the both first two turns. Mm. Uh, and he's got three points already for Reaper, so he's already maxed, pretty much maxed out. Well, he's only two turns in, he's already, he's already halfway there on, his, on the total three secondaries. Mate, he's got two three for Reaper, phenomenal. two for Headhunter, two oh, for Recon. It's crazy. Uh, the question at this stage, I mean, looking at the, the, the state of the board, is not really. Um, whether or not Simon's going to win, uh, it's, it's just by how much at this stage. Mm. Uh, look, Stuart is uh, an upcomer. Uh, yeah. He's been on the 40k competitive scene for probably six months. Yeah, give or take. Six to nine months. Uh, I've had best nine months. Yep. And uh, he's one of our patrons. Yeah, man. As is Simon. As is Simon. Uh, look, so look, they're on a top table in an event because yeah. they're our patrons. And the only person this guy lost <laughs> after was our patron. So uh, I, give, I give no one else such good service. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's the only reason he lost and took those took the, the wrong I drones away. Can't be, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, it was a payoff. That's yeah. all it was. Got to be that. Got to be that. <laughs> Sold out, I sold. I sold my soul. <laughs> yes. So, um, if you are interested in stats, obviously we do a lot on this channel, but also head over to 40kstats.com, which is where one of our special guests, Peter the Falcon, uh, is uh, probably more notably known from. Oh, probably just as notably known from Chapter yeah. Tactics, but um, the you know, and sorry, 40kstats.com, I guess, would be more his his baby, so to speak. Pete, tell us about 40k stats. Hey. Sorry, sound cut out there for a second. What were you saying? Tell us a bit about 40k stats. Tell the people. Oh, yeah. 40kstats.com. That's my website. I uh, track all of the GTs and majors uh, around the world. Um, I track win rates by faction, by sub-faction. I look at uh, faction versus factions. So you see like what, uh, what your, how your faction is doing against other factions in the current meta. I apply filters so you can look at uh, things like what it's like in the uh, ITC meta versus, say, uh, an ETC style meta. I'm actually building out a new uh, database for team tournaments. So I'm hoping to get that up and running in the next couple of weeks. That'll be pretty cool. I'm going to be doing a big update tonight. i got about 12 GTs and majors uh, that uh, happened last weekend that I spent the last few days uh, putting together. Um, so we're getting quite the view of where the meta stands now in a post-chapter uh, approved, post-LVO world. It's pretty pretty interesting. I think it's the most interesting has been in a decade, right, right, right now, in the next three months. We are we are more connected yeah. through, uh, through streaming services like this, so getting able to see games on the other side of the world, yeah. um, and being able to have people commentate those from the other side of the world. I mean, last weekend, at 6 a.m. in the morning, we were in a car park, watching iPad, commentating a game <laughs> uh, at the Iron Halo... No, it wasn't, it wasn't Iron Halo. Halo. It, was, it, was, it was from Jason Horn and from the Iron Halo. Okay, sorry. Commentary. I can't remember where it was yeah. before, I believe. Arkansas. Yeah, it was a, an event in the US, which, I mean, go back six to 12 months ago. Wasn't a thing. Like that's, that's, that's not even thought of. No. And now, yeah, no, for and sure. now we've had um, two events where we've had people we've had, yeah. um, coming on from, from interstate, international. Uh, we've got more people talking to each other on podcasts than ever before. The community's never been bigger, but at the same time, it's never been closer. Yeah. <laughs> like this. Um, yes, uh, so regarding the team tournament um, stats, we have the ANZ team championships in May. Uh, so let us know um, what sort of stats you want, uh, and I'm more than happy to obviously provide those in whatever format I can. I'm playing in that one again. Oh, for sure. Oh, awesome. any of the stats. I mean, we've got our team event that'll be August, I think it is. We had 120 players for that last year, so. Um, oh, yeah, no, that'll be great. I, I got my first batch uh, last week. Tom Adriani sent me the Belgian Nationals results, and uh, I think he was expecting me to dump it in like my current databases, but because team tournaments are so different, I want to do something special for them. I'm just yeah. trying to figure out the best way to track it all. Um, so that it, I, like, so it actually shows, um, I think, the faction versus faction, and, and there's going to there's gonna have to be some kind of list. Uh, there's one big thing uh, in team tournaments that you need to factor in, and that's who was put up, who got paid into who. Exactly. It's yeah, and that's the process. is so crucial. It's so and that's where, I'm, that's where I'm looking at right now, is how to build that database out so it, it's easy to see uh, like who was put up in, uh, like as a defender versus attacker, etc. So. Well, uh, for what it's worth, um, a big plug for Down on Pairings. Uh, Down on Pairings does uh, team events, yep. and it manages the pairing process, so it'll keep track of who was put up, so who was attacker, who was defender. Uh, we had the ANZ Team Championships last year um, use it, uh, and we ran, that was our very first ever Dream Team competition. Yeah, that's so and good. so you got Dream Team points, for example, if you won as the first round defender, you lost points if you were like the first turn attacker and things like that. So you know what? I'm ha I'll send you what we, we've got from, um, I, I, like, it'll be out of date, obviously. Like, there's for sure, but still, it can give you something else to look at. Of, of what it is. And if you ever want to have a bit of a chat on you know, Discord or whatever, as even just as a soundboard, I'm happy to. You know me. I, I, I probably got just as hard of a, a stats boner. Uh, <laughs> keep it in the DM. Keep it in the DMs, you two. Shit. Man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Adam's, that, getting, Adam's getting jealous over here. It's getting weird. He is. I think uh, there was a discussion <laughs> that we were going to find an island halfway between yeah, yeah, uh, Canada yeah. and Australia. And you guys can set up a stats shack and just make sweet stats love. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of wankers. <laughs> you do know these guys, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Um, a little call on the game, though. <laughs> um, man, just like he's hiding a noose, a, a noose made of venoms. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can still There's see nothing wrong with that. Looks like this turn, he's decided to go all in on the Zoanthropes, I believe. Because I haven't seen him put any, I haven't seen him pick up any tournaments yet. So I can only assume that's. Yeah, he's piling into the zone throw, trying to cut down their numbers this turn. He's looking, is that Kellamov still alive? Looking at that string of, I'm assuming it's witches in the middle, middle of the board on the right hand side. I think he's. There he goes. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's got picked up. Um, so we got Dicky Roman. 
Yeah, so the killer mask gone, the assassin dude chick thing is gone. Yeah. The uh, um, aberrant, no, abominant, sorry, is gone. So pretty much all the. Uh, so it's just a maggot. What about the, the maggot? Patriarch? He's the warlord. The patriarch is dead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, yeah. That doesn't sound good at all. No. I don't know. That, I mean, there's just not enough tyranny to turn to account for to deal with that many venoms parked on the doorstep. Some against donut handle venoms. Even bone throws don't handle venoms very well. No, it's just not efficient. Hmm. We're getting a lot of noise come back with you. Not too bad. Noise? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, make sure you get to say um a clock a clock count. Take a look at the clock for us. Can't hear us. Yeah. Scores are level at the end of turn four so that's between Liam yeah. and Pete Patel. Well, um, however, Gilliman is dead. Oh, G-Man. Oh, G-Man. Oh, he's hiding behind the building. It took 21 Mega Nobs. <laughs> oh, my God. G-Man! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So it looks like Pete has a Vindicator Assassin, three Sniper Scouts, and G-Man left on, I'm assuming, five wounds remaining. Has he got enough yet? Has he stood up yet? Has he stood up yet? Has he stood up yet? Or is he alive? He's alive on five, has not gone down. He's not even had to use his Viagra yet, that's amazing. Oh man. Okay. I'm just looking at um, 40k stats at the moment, I love the fact that Corsairs are the number one army in the faction breakdown. <laughs> yeah, because that one that one person, yeah. <laughs> Jessica yeah, Jessica Bowman uh, went uh, 4 and 2 at LVO with them. It was like 1,001 points of Corsairs and 999 points of Anari. See, I took pure Corsairs in 2017 to LVO and was pipped at the post because mine was 100% Corsairs. And then, yeah, yeah, someone finished LVO on 5 and mine, I finished 4 and 2. And, um, yeah, his was yeah, 999 points, of course, of, of something else, and 1,001, of course, yeah, it was oh, bastard. Yeah. <laughs> a question for you, Pete, because you had an interesting list. Um, it, uh, it lost round one, um, but the con concept, I'm wondering how it works from an ITC faction scoring. So we had a guy who had two Aquila strong points, or whatever they're called, the big, the big, um, Micro -cannons, the yeah. cannons. Yeah, the two, like, neutral fortifications, yeah. Is his list undefined as faction? Because yeah. the, the largest attachment it's unaligned. is for unaligned. No, um, so as far as I understand it, um, there's like you can't take unaligned. Uh, I know because Sean, um, Sean Morgan from Chapter Tactics tried the exact same thing to try to get best unaligned and uh, got sla sla slapped down. So it's basically whatever is the most outside of, of those fortifications is what happens. So he's a big nightmare in that case. I would, yeah. I would love that to be a, a best unaligned and it's, the prize is nothing. <laughs> yeah, best in fact in Aquila's strong point. Like, that's it. You get emptiness. Here you go. <laughs> it's amazing how the mighty have fallen because those Aquilas are just nowhere near as good as they used to be. No, they used to be everywhere now, yeah. You rarely, if ever, see them. Yeah. Yeah, look, I, I think they're awful. The fact you can't even place models on top of them? Yeah. Terrible, man. You put one character yeah. and one squad inside. You used to be able to put 40 dudes in there. And on top. You can get 20 in there now. Sorry? You can get 20 in there. You can get 20 in there now with one character. Back in the day, it was 40 guys. Just to work. Yeah. You just put them in like 40 characters if you want. And then guys on top and exactly right. you didn't have a spike bonus on the back inside. Yeah. Uh, even Bastion, sorry, Bastions, Bunkers, all those things. Bastions and Bunkers in um, in 6th edition. Stop. Stop dragging the chairs around. <laughs> 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 uh, in 6th uh, and 7th, there was a lot of like um, the the, uh, the Bastions, and there was yeah. the uh, the cheaper bunker, which was like 75 points. Yeah, you used the fence line as well. Yeah. 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 Remember the escape hatch trick? Yeah, man. The escape hatch yeah. so cool. It's stupid. It's very stupid. Um, I used to use that with uh, Wraith Guard with uh, D Scythes. Yep, good play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's brutal. I think I think we've lost. Uh, it looks like a, maybe we've lost about four Zoes, three or four Zoe types. Uh, he hasn't pulled up any turn again, so I only think he's pumping his own throws this turn. Yeah, it can only be he's pumping his own throws. We have an Archon in the bottom right-hand corner taking on uh, the, three the three, well, what's left is two. Yeah. I think there might be another character down there uh, as well, but it's another, uh, I think it might be a Lamin. So there's a Lamin right there. They're so small, you can barely tell, and they blend in. They do. Uh, yeah. he's, had, he's had three Dizzy Ravages, they've literally moved six inches, turn one, and have not moved again. Nice. They've just sat there for a once to hit, once to move, and just checking their Panda Flesh every turn. The Panda Flesh? Panda Flesh? Panda Flesh. Panda? Mmm, Panda Flesh. Yeah, do you know what, I really wonder what, that, what does whole, an all bamboo diet do for, do for the taste and texture? Yeah, probably um, gross. That's a really interesting question to ask. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I heard they're, uh, like, you know, from my experience, they're delicious. They taste kind of like, you know, a wedge, a bull's, what is it? A, 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 a bald eagle? eagle? Bald eagle, yeah. Bald eagle. What's another endangered species? Rhinos. Rhinos. They're delicious as well. Yeah, yeah, they must be delicious. <laughs> Let's just list them all. <laughs> apparently, Galapagos tortoise were legitimately delicious. Yeah. Do you know they, they, so they, they used to go to Galapagos, but apparently they were everywhere when they got there. They were, like, everywhere. There was tons of them. And they ate them all, because they had no predators. They, and, and the scientists were just like, get one of these tortoises, we need to study it. And so they would, because they, they could do something with their food, they stacked them up and tie them down in the holes of their ships, which is really mean. But the sailors found out they were the most delicious thing I'd ever eaten, and none of them ever made it back to England. They kept eating more. And um, that, that is what put them extinct more than anything else. On another note, kangaroos. Yes, kangaroos are delicious. Eight, eight we are, I'm pretty sure we are one of... We are... Oh, mate. Oh, and, uh, and Vulcan, this is... Uh, 
This is Jeremy Marigold Martino. It's Marigold. It's Marigold. It's Marigold. Peter's on here, man. He gave you the Marigold. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, Thank you, Peter. All of Australia, thanks to you. It's hilarious. <laughs> so, finally, Jenna, one little comment. I know. That's so good. We just keep on giving. But yeah, kangaroos. <laughs> Do you know it's two, it's two to one kangaroos in Australia? Yeah, and that's why they're so good to eat. Yeah, because there's tons of them. Eat them all. Because we, we killed all the dingoes and dogs that eat the kangaroos. So there's nothing to eat the kangaroos anymore except us. We should get back to this game. We should. And less about what we're eating. It's <laughs> <laughs> Australia history. And, and right. the history of Galapagos turtles. So, uh, well, sponsored. Six points there for Simon that round from the looks. Yeah, six points. Yeah, let's, yep. uh, let's have a peek. Okay, he's, he's got the bonus system. He's got all four objectives, it looks like. He does not have the bonus system. Okay, so there must, there must be terminus on that, on that upper right. Yeah, so at the moment he's got kill one, hold one. He's maxed out Reaper, maxed out Headhunter, three points for recon. Because he, he can't get four points of recon in three turns. That's yeah. absolutely amazing. He hasn't done it yet. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so he will, he will max out his secondaries, uh, no next, doubt. Next turn. Next no turn. No doubt. Um, and it's all just about cleaning up at that stage. Because so far, um, Stuart, he's not getting a single recon point. He might, if he's still here at the end of the game, might get one point for ground control. So going back to the start of this game, guys, for all of us, all four of us, what secondaries would you pick for Stuart? Um, well, I don't think um, Stuart expected Simon to be so aggressive. aggressive. Um, well, not all people do, but Venoms are so good. They're, good, they're actually decent in combat for a vehicle, and they got fly. So you don't care. You just fall back. As long as you're still charging things, they're going to kill you. Yeah. And nothing in his army is going to kill you in combat by a handful of characters. There's no threat there. There's no threat there at all. He's adding more, more damage. I think if, uh, if Stuart wanted, because Stuart won the dice, wanted to see goes first, and he made Simon, made Simon go first. If he was gonna do that, I think recon was a bad choice. 100%. Uh, if he was gonna go first, I think potentially recon yeah, yeah, yeah. could have been a team. Gonna, well, as soon as he gets 60, like no, 30 to 60 termagants across the middle line of the board, that might as well hit six up, six up. It's a lot, it's a lot harder for. for well, firstly, there's no way he gets handed like this. No, there's no freaking way. He has not left his deployment zone, guys. He has not left his deployment zone. He couldn't. Oh, I'm well, sorry, he has. Down the bottom uh, right hand corner. Oh, with these strikes. He yeah, could have, he could have got a recon point, I think, on turn two. Uh, if I bring up the overlay. Well, he, he also, going second, he also. Could have enemy lines, will. Well, probably, but also he put the um, the double pistol dude uh, like here yeah. and the rippers down here. Um, if he put the rippers um, uh, down the you know, somewhere on the left hand yeah. side of the table, um, then he could have got recon because he did have it turned to some gaunts yeah. uh, on that top left hand side. Yeah. So, right, well, he's still actually in the he's in those yeah, top yeah. two quarters. So, look, I think he could have got that. Um, well, look, there's, there's a nice bit of right side blocking train here. Um, kill him off there. So, I probably kill him off there actually. And rippers, rippers on the right. So, yeah. rippers straight there. And then, look, it's, it's very hard for him to like I support pull a hole. One venom doesn't kill doesn't kill three into ripper bases. So, it's going to take him two venom plus, which means pulling one from here at best to jump over there to get rid of him. Um, and that's, that's actually pulling away a decent amount of fire from against your stuff. And then yeah. the kill off is a character. It needs significant investment to get rid of, um, especially with that one side. I can't enter anything. It just literally doesn't tap anything. Uh, Alright, guys. Uh, so, what would you guys have picked? Pete, Ma uh, Mike, what would you guys have picked for secondary if you were Stuart? It's a hard one. I mean, he's um, the recon ground control pushes Bill makes sense in context with what he was dealing with, but um, I don't know there's a good option there. I mean, uh, Getting, getting the, the Drakari out of the Venoms has to be the first priority to achieve any of those with any degree of reliability or success. Exactly right. So, and well, killing them out of those Venoms was just going to be a, a nightmare for the, the way the Tyranny Army was built. You almost have to play on the belief he's never going to kill anything. And kill, yeah, you, you literally... The bonus. I mean, so, that, on, on that if, he, if he'd been fortunate enough to pop a Venom or two in the early parts of the game, either through smites or maybe through um, something cheeky in terms of ambush, then um, you can start building up um, some points that way. But in reality, what he's done is... He's having to get Simon to play into those secondaries, essentially. Well, so there's, there's a few things that I've seen that I think could change. Firstly, the Abominant was an, too easy to pick up. An abominant, yeah, definitely. abominant with the right buffs kills a minimum of a minimum turn, pretty much, in combat. Yep. Um, and the same thing happened for the, the Patriarch, which was the Bulldog that I picked up. Uh, also too easy to pick up. Had he fully enclosed those in Venom Throats, oh, sorry, Zone Throats, he could have picked, been picking up two, two a turn. And then if he, if he can position them right, which Simon's not going to let him do now that he's, he's the one being charging his Terminus, he could have wrapped him in Terminus, the same as what Simon was probably going to do with his Solitaire. Um, so you charge in, you punch one, you charge, charge in Terminus as well. Um, after the Aberrant kills it, the Terminus um, pile in and consolidate and wrap around the character. Protecting it. You see Eric do it all the freaking time. Um, and that's probably the next level of Stuart's learning. I mean, he's going to have all these tech characters, you've got to invest in protecting them. Yeah. They're the only significant damage dealers you have in combat. And so yeah. if you're playing against someone aggressive like this and they don't do anything, you're, you're gone. Yeah. You're, 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 I think, yeah, potentially I think gone. Um, look, Simon is, is probably one of the most experienced players at this event. I think that's a fair statement. I think he's one of the best players in Australia. Yeah, probably. Yeah, um, and so from that perspective, like he's he's getting G Man up. You know, he's made like an eleven inch charge to fight Megan Obs again. G Man just made an eleven inch charge to fight the, the remainder of the Megan Obs. Megan left. Oh lord. Man. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> that guy. Thirty. Can you yeah, get all thirty in the game? G Man killed thirty Megan Obs by himself solo. I'm pretty sure he's got just Gilliman left. Just Gilliman versus 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 the rest of the Orcs. Yeah. So it's like a goddamn horse heresy novel. It, it is. <laughs> it is. Holy crap! It is. This is no no fear, but instead of uh, word bearers, it's Orcs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like he's just, and he's holding his breath the entire time. Yeah. That's what Primarchs are meant to do. All right. Yeah. And the question yeah. is, is can that Gilliman beat a baddie at a game of tennis? <laughs> that is a, yeah. that's such a good meme. Have you seen the one where they holding hands? Yes. Oh, there's so many good ones. So, oh, I love it. Right. Uh, I think one of our favorites though is the one at the on a back. Yeah.
mate, yeah, they, but the model itself, beautiful, absolutely amazing. It's, it's aesthetically perfect. Yeah. I can't be calling it. Yeah, but, but the internet is full of trolls. 100%. Yeah. It's the whole community. Like, there's like two guys in the community who aren't trolls. Yeah, pretty much. Of, of the whole entire community, like two guys who can only take a piss. <laughs> and they should be shunned. Yeah, there's one, there's one guy called, called Brian, and there's another guy called, like, Steve. Steve, yeah. Steve yeah. and Brian, and the only two guys who aren't trolls. Gilman killed 19 megadons for the game. So Gilman, as of right now? It's like the game's over now, but he killed 19 megadons for the game. He didn't kill any of them? He's killed 7 more. Oh, he's killed, so he's killed a total of 19 megadons for this game. I thought, I thought he was already up to 21 no, before. No, no. Okay, cool. So yeah. He was up to 12. He, still seven. he just killed 7 more then. So he's killed yeah. a total of 19 out of 30, 30 megadons. Oh, god damn it then. That's rookie numbers, whatever. Uh, rookie numbers. <laughs> well, so he's killed, se he's killed 7 a turn, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. 6, 7, and 7. Yeah, yeah. Um, back to this game, looks like there's a significant lack in zone throws. I see one, two, three, yeah. he's six, six left out of what was, twen what was 12, three to four. Yeah, I'd say um, there's a severe lacking in Tyranid models. Mm. I think zone throws, yeah sure, you can, you can be specific if you'd like, but you could also use the same thing for pretty much every other unit. He's lost three Venoms, do I can count? One, two, three, four, five, so six, six there, seven, uh, eight. eight. Yeah, so he's lost three, three Venoms. Yeah. It's way too little too late, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. Gilman killed 21, he's just, two more just popped from around. They're like, not a Primark! <laughs> Yeah, so Gil Gilman's Pound of Flesh is 21 Megadobs. So yeah, exactly 7s. Seven, 7, 7, 7, baby. Alright. Um, so big shout out to our sponsors. Big thanks to Knights of Dice for their awesome discounts that they're giving to our, our viewers. Uh, so don't forget to head over to knightsofdice.com. 15 freaking percent off. 15 percent off. ANZ40K, ANZ 40K, 2019. You can find it on our Facebook page. Um, uh, yeah, 15 percent off. They do laser cut terrain in both uh, high detail and, um, well, no frills. Yep. So if you're after, so let's say you're a tournament organizer and you want to bash out you know, 20 tables, 20 tables. cheap, then they've got an option for you. If you're someone who just wants a more aesthetically pleasing table, um, they have the more detailed version. It's MBF, yeah? They do MBF, laser cut MBF. Laser cut MBF. Yeah, yeah. They also do tokens, yeah. templates and stuff. I love the smell. Am I weird? <laughs> you are weird. It's a good smell. Uh, big shout out to Frontline Gaming uh, Australia uh, for their support. Yep. Uh, you can find uh, at frontlinegamingaustralia.com. Maybe .au, I should probably know that. Um, they have FLG mats and ITC terrain, and another shout out to OTP terrain for their amazing 3D printing terrain from 6mm up to 32mm uh, in all kinds of uh, gaming systems. And I think you're about to say goodbye, Yellow Brick Rippers. Rippers are gone, guys. Goodbye, rippers. Yellow Brick Rippers. Oh no, it's over. Those Rippers yep. were was holding it on anyway, though. Right? Yeah, exactly. That was it. <laughs> that was it. No, no, that no, was, no, that was, that was the whole thing. That was the one straw. The rest of it was, no, don't worry about it. Just that Rippers. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the, the website for Frontline Gaming is FrontlineGamingAustralia.com or one word FrontlineGamingAustralia.com so D-O-T-C-O-N yeah, D-I-C-K-P-I-L-L-S dot com uh, oh the Ravagers have pushed up they're coming Ravagers are coming guys he's just going for the nail in the coffin yeah. um, so there, must this, be, there must be some of these guys out of line of sight uh, can't get. it doesn't matter so one of the things so for those watching at home that are unfamiliar with the, the format that we're going with here so we have the ANZ 40k Masters which is finished that was a 4 round 16 player knockout event uh, in the final round earlier today Simon who's on stream right now uh, played against this guy uh, for first and second place Thing goes so good. of the Masters event. So Simon is the ANZ 40k Master, Pete and I'm not sure if Pete's such a cannon. It's first prize. Trophy here. So it's 40k, it's 40k Masters on it. Um, it's pretty big, that's what she said. Um, <laughs> it's HP, guys. Or it's like a side cannon, actually. Sure. It's a what? It's a cannon. It's a cannon, you reckon? It shoots bolts. It's a nerf gun. Um, and the then, but as you lose the ma uh, game at the Masters, you feed into the open event, which is a 30 or 32 player event. I can't remember the final number. I should, but I can't. Um, so at the start of the round one, there was like 16 players in the open. Oh wow! The Orcs got up. The Orcs got up with one megan left. Good Pete's job. gone down. Good, 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 good close game. Good though. close game. Oh. I'm, not, I'm not saying any disparaging about either of the gentlemen here, but that would be a better game to have on stream. So 21 to 25 was a, a close game for Pete. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Gilman run through his megas would have been. Would have been entertaining. Would have been very entertaining. Um, Yes, uh, so as uh, in round one there were 16 players in the Open, eight people lost in the Masters, uh, and so they fed into round two of the Open, so yep. round two we had 24 players, and so on and so on. Um, so Pete, you might be interested in hearing this one, and uh, I'm not sure if uh, if you heard this one last night, Mike, but uh, round three, we didn't have, the rule was there was no draws, because uh, in a knockout style event you can't really have draws. So it gets to uh, round three, we've got Simon versus Christopher Wright, um, so one of the top ITC players uh, in uh, being Chris, and they get to turn four, um, they're running low on time, they agree they're just going to play out turn five. Yep. They play out turn five, it ends in a draw. They draw, 23, 23. They look at me and they say, what's the tiebreaker? Like, what do we do now? And I said, well, there are no draws. And they're like, what's the tiebreaker? And I said, you both play five minute turns. And so they played a five minute turn. Simon got, <laughs> up, got four points up in his turn. Chris turns to me, and, and Chris has uh, a jump pack. Vanguard vet? No, it was a character dude. Okay, smash captain. Yeah. Let's smash captain dude. Yep. Uh, and yeah. uh, this just capped their character. That's all he had left. He needed four points just to get a draw. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, all right, well, I can kill this Venom, I can charge this Venom, and that'll get me that objective, and then I can get this. At best, he could get four if he rolled ridiculous. Mm. And he looks at me and goes, sorry, and then Simon goes, what's the tiebreaker if, um, if, uh, if there's another draw? And okay. I, said, I said, five minute turns. Five minute turns. And he's like, well, at that point, he had two characters, and there was like three Ravagers, like yeah, two yeah. Venoms. Yeah. Simon doesn't move, he just picks up his characters, game's over. Yeah. So in 
ended up solving winning by two points. Was yeah, something, something like that. Something like that. Um, uh, that sounds awesome, though. That was a great finish by two of the best in the country, so really good. Yep. And that's on stream. That's it is on stream. I'm, I'm going to go watch that one for sure. Um, and yeah, I'm really interested. Really, who's, who um, commented on that? Was that Duck and Eric? No, no, no. Catch that. that was the NZ40 Cabal lads. Nice. Oh, of course it was. So we had Hayden Korach and Andrew Bartosh yeah. from the NZ40 Cabal podcast. Uh, and good lads. Yeah, good lads. Good we we'll be going over there at some point, won't we? Probably. Yeah. Sounds like something we'll do. Sounds like something we'll do. <laughs> uh, we oh, and <laughs> the winner of this game, um, which yes, means Simon is likely to walk away with we'll not back one, back but back back two. Back two. Back <laughs> two guns. So this is a working. Uh, the other one's working too. It's the working firing. Um, actually, bolt gun. Looks like a bolt gun. What's the new one? What new bolt guns does it? Yeah, this is. It does. Yeah. Um, I it's think it's awesome. I don't want it to go. I want to keep it. Uh, but Simon's family are currently on right now. Is it a bunch of kids? They're gonna love it. Yeah. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah, and there's, um, you know, vouchers, but um, uh, maybe, maybe not. Oh. How am I? I can't tell you this. Peter, just so you know, I played this event last year. I came seconds. I played in Venice this year. Right. I came seconds. <laughs> <laughs> made, man. The year before that? Always the bridesmaid. Yeah, the year before that I can say. Brothers. Bridesmaid. This brothers. is the first Masters since I think 2010 I haven't played him. Oh, yep. Shit. Seven straight. I'm running it. Me yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the only reason I did so well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fun. <laughs> yeah. Mind you, I wonder if I took guard, how would go? There's a, there's a lot of talent, a lot of guard in this field. Like, absolutely crap load. I did, I did tower. say um, the, One. The, the, the fact that you yeah, took, took Tao, the fact that you took Tao to the Masters event. Um, was obviously the right call from an ETC yeah. Team Australia perspective, but it was the wrong call for, me winning the for you winning the Masters. I took this to get some reps against high, very high quality opponents uh, with something that I intend to take to ETC. Yeah, so so he, I, need, I, need to get, I need to get reps of a very high level, which is exactly what goes to look at that Simon game. I've, you can totally tell I'm going to do that book there, and you can totally tell who the Master is. Because yep. he freaking schooled me on so much stuff, and I've learned absolutely crap loads. Uh, absolutely yeah, even, and that's I love listening to your interview at the end. That was quite good, uh, listening yeah. to him describe the game. It was really good, yeah. yeah. And you, you could tell I had a game plan, and it was just like... Wasn't that good a game for you, Chase? That's just experience. That's just experience. Because um, because his army has so many tricks and it's such a polarized, such a polarized army. You need, like I have, I, I, my army has the density to kill it, has the density of fire to kill it, but not when he has so many tricks to stop me. So it's just like a battle of wills almost. And I, I don't know enough about how Tau function to be able to deny him doing a lot of what he can do to me. Like the solitaire, yeah. I have ways to deny that, but if I deny the solitaire, I open myself up to like three other tricks. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, it's, unfortunately, this Stuart Trainer is at the point where in this matchup, he literally he, he, has a, he has a set of tools, he has a tool bag. Yeah. And it doesn't have the one in there that kills Venoms. <laughs> yeah. That's legit. That's just it. The thing with this game. Yeah. This. There you go. Sorry, I was gonna say this. This game is kind of. I feel like this game was lost almost in the list building phase, which isn't something that happens often in, in uh, Eighth Edition. But just looking at the lists, it's. Uh, you almost wish you had a little bit more in the Gene Stealer cult side, uh, like the Rocks of Acolytes or something that could pop up three inches away and just wreck yeah. a bunch of shit, right? But well, even um, even any Impaler Cannon, Hive Guard, or yeah, exactly. um, something similar from the Need range would have helped it have some long-range effect because it, it's just been outgunned in the open mm -hmm. two turns at, at a range that it can't compete at. And here's the, here's the bad thing about the, the Tyranny versus especially Venom matchup, yeah? Everything's a monster, there are no vehicles. The, 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 Venom, the, the uh, poison shots always get mileage against everything you bring, no matter what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a Dracaria is always going to be a good place against Tyranids. Yeah, just right. always, so he, by he, nature. He doesn't have, have to dip between the Rock Riders and shit, which doesn't beat the other like four people he's played, played in the Exactly, yeah. yeah. Just just have a chance in this one with his, with his set of books. The thing is, these guys are first and second in the open. Yeah. So right now, um, Stuart is probably, you know, he's playing, for, like, he's playing for points, yeah. which, but as, right now, legitimately, they could just stop playing, tally scores up, because nothing like... It's not going to change. change. It's not going to change in the sign. Or Stuart. Oh, okay. Stuart is second place in the ANZ 40k Open, regardless mm. of nice. the result of this game now. Nice, nice, nice. Um, and that's that's because this this game here is one... This is this is the top two playing the champion round Place for one first, first and second. second. Yeah. Um, and look in knockout styles, I think that's the only way to do it. It's the only way to do it. Well, the idea behind it is you don't get any leap throws. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know... Well, that's why I dropped. That's why I dropped out to do this. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm, I'm now. I've already got second. There's, uh, there's no way for me to get a podium in the open, open. and I want to do this because I well, actually missed the solo. <laughs> if I could win an event, yeah, and play two games and stream two games, perfection. It's so yeah. good. Yeah, I really would love an event to let us submit one list and both of us and take it in turns playing. Tag turn. Tag um, and the other one streams. And I'll, I'll call your games and be like, you are fucking it up. <laughs> Don't move it, there, you idiot. <laughs> so, well, some teams might might allow it. Um, yeah, Alright, we've just been told by. Well, there you go. Matt Morisoli just told us we can do it at EastCon. Nice. All right, let's we'll do it. Lock it in. Sure. We'll write, we'll write something. I get to write the list. Oh, and what? Marisoli wants to write the list. No, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure about that. Write one detachment each. Okay, that's there's three cool. of us. Each wrote one detachment. That's cool. oh, mate, we have to decide on the army faction keywords. Yeah, and then, you know, we just roll a d6 or something. We just roll like a d16 for the faction. <laughs> this is just going to be stupid. Well, how's it going to be super faction? So we roll a, we roll a d4. No, so we'll if you're in chaos, we'll we'll let's not do that. Let's discuss this later. We got a horrible idea. Back on the game. Zone throws looks like there's two left. Maybe three left. Of 12. And we need to get a, we need to get a time check. I'm going to mute for a second so I can scream.
Sean Hogan, that's yeah. 35 minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, jokes. in jokes. In jokes. In jokes. Which not many of our audience know. Sorry, it's like 10 years old. It's your own house. Alright, so it looks like we're probably in the... I think we're still in the top of four. Yeah, I think we're still in the top of four. I think we're just going to charge my other guy, Simon. Yeah, Simon just in his charge phase, guys. Looks like he's going to try... Looks like he's put some... Either Richard or Cadillacs. Uh, nah, just chilling. Um, we'll do 50, so, do you guys have any terrain for Rackham? Because Knights of Dice are giving a 15% off code. Oh, never mind. Um, Alright, so we're still... <laughs> Alright, so I think my phone's dying on volume. Oh, battery, so I'll see how this goes. Uh, at the moment, we've pretty much got a big unit of Gaunts, uh, which you can see lining uh, the back of the table. Uh, we have a Familiar and a uh, Magus uh, up the top center, uh, pretty much that, that dark blue venom. And then we have two newest ropes. Um, so pretty much there is one, two, three and a half characters. I'm not sure if the familiar is a character. It counts as a character while the Magus is alive. Okay, so there's four characters in that little pool, and there's one Venom, three Witches, and a Succubus against them. Uh, just to be clear there, it counts as a character because you can't target him and it, but it itself isn't a character. Okay. Yeah. So it wouldn't give up a headhunter point, no. for example. No. No. It just takes his first win pretty much. It, it's kind of like a drone in that regard. But it, it just means there was a problem with the index where you added a familiar and made the character targetable, basically. So uh, yeah. the codex has clarified that no, that's not the case. There's 13 gaunts left. So 13 gaunts, two nearest ropes, and the major's familiar. And that is it. I think you'll be lucky to see the end of turn five. Yeah, we're probably not going to make it. But look, he's... he's uh, yeah, uh, I think I'm very lucky to pick up. I'm lucky to pick up four more points in this game. It's probably going to pick up three more. Looks like there's uh, some wind, some wind going on this top. There's, there's a bike here at the top of that wind venom. Um, you can probably smite that one out. Looks like he's got some classes in range. And there's a unit of witches there. So you can probably pick up a few points and get a, get a butcher for the next turn. As long as those turns aren't going to lock down, which I think they probably are going to be. Oh, no, I get to get to get to get uh, clockwise, we have 25 minutes on Stewart's clock and 7 minutes on Simon's clock. 7 left for Simon. Wow, okay. well, Simon's going to pick up a whole more for this round, guaranteed. So I'm going to yeah. find out next turn, guys. Just in his, in his turn five, he'll probably time out. He's got 7 left, is it? I mean, uh, 7 minutes left. Yeah, 7 minutes left. Right, so it's not gonna matter Doing what he has on the board doesn't really matter, right? He could just spend a turn and do nothing if he really wanted to if he's afraid of timing out, and I think he'd be fine. Exactly right. Yeah, he's exactly. Four, he's actually holding those objectives and just shrugging. Exactly. Yeah, five is nothing. Yeah. Him, scoring, just, him scoring extra points doesn't change anything for him. Um, exactly, yeah. Just jump the Venoms onto a couple objectives to make sure nothing crazy happens and leave it. Just be tight, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is very similar to where our, our game ended, but he wiped me with six minutes left on the, on the board. On the, oh. his clock. So it looks like Stuart's doing a little bit better than me because he's got those couple left. <laughs> <laughs> but mind you, he does have like about 120 more models than I did. So there's always that. Okay. I'm interested to know, well, we'll get, we'll get into it with him after this game, but I'm interested to know why he moved the dizzies up. I, I was assuming it was because there was some um, zone throat here. He probably couldn't see. Um, that's why he pushed the dizzies up so he get, get range on all and light aside on all the. Um, the zone drops because naturally that was the only target they left really. Uh, because I think the Termagants were locked down in combat, or they might have just been out of line of sight. And, and, and in the end, it's just Dizzy's verse. He didn't need him anyway. He's going to have to kill the Termagants anyway. You guys still there? Yeah, still here. Fantastic. Uh, just, just listening and watching. Nice. <laughs> uh, you got, what's, what's, what is Chapter Tactics covering this next episode, Pete? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to be on on Monday, but I have, I, I'm have. i going to be sending Val and Pablo some, some stuff about this event. Um, and uh, maybe there was another GT this, uh, that uh, Nick Nadavati and a few other people attended. Yeah, so I'm going to see if, see if I can get the results from that, but it's hard to... They were pretty cryptic about like lists and shit this, uh, for this this one. <laughs> so you don't, I don't know. you don't know what Nick took? I know what Nick took. He posted it on his... Um, on the Beast Coast website and somewhere else, but there's a lot of people that didn't upload lists. Ooh. That's so frustrating as a TO. Are they allowed to yeah. do that? Yeah. Well, it, it, it's quite possible they like manually submitted the list to the TO. Um, I'm going to try to get them because I can't. I, I won't use it for um, for the 40k stats site like, without them. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. Well, it's pretty useless if you don't know the list. Yeah. Exactly. I have no idea what you're playing. Yeah. Nick's list looked very interesting because um, he decided to go based off of um, what his um, his like followers chose. Yeah. So it's like a Chaos Marine possessed list. <laughs> his followers are decent in a few weeks once we get the um, the new uh, well, Shadow Spear release. Let's hope. Yeah, is. with the greater ones. Yeah. Well, this, they're, they're baby. I say decent. Right? I'm not saying good. Yeah. 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 Better than they were. <laughs> Can't get any worse. Yeah. Hmm. What, is there a way that they can make us want to take Chaos Space Marine Marines? Um, it, yeah, get rid of the cultists. How good, how good is the, the formation going to be to make us want to take them? Well, ask the same question. Who, who takes tactical Marines? Well, exactly right. Mind you, you can, you can, you can add a lot more buffs on the Chaos Space Marines, technically. Because you get the same chapter tactic level buffs as Space Marines get, plus you get all the psychic level buffs, plus you get extra strategies for the marks. But like, there's an actual... Because there's, there's literally no strategy apart from um, Scions of Gilliman that is relevant on a tactical Marine. Only, only for Look, Space Marines. There, for Marines there is a very, very niche place for Chaos Space Marine uh, Marines. Uh, I feel as though um, I've seen them done quite well as slot marks.
Marcus Slanesh, uh with with Empress Children as the um, Legion. So what, they fight, they first. fight first, and you take them all with pistol close combat weapons. And there's actually quite a few attacks. Um, but like we're talking, it's very niche. It's but not just great. Anything better with a couple of Zerkers and Rhinos? Yeah, 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 sure. Not if you want to take a Slanesh army. Um, as I said, it's a very niche. I thought, you, I thought you were going on a completely different track there. Like, it's a very niche place for them on your shelf, closest to your bin. <laughs> mate, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, Nick Carlisle went one and two on the first day of the, that like, Mythicos event, so I don't think it's worth the. No, yeah, there's no surprises there. Even, even the mighty Nick Carlisle can't make that list. Like, win, <laughs> dude. Do you know what? It took? Well, yeah. But do you know what I can do? I make Templars average. <laughs> <laughs> took me a year. That... Took me a year to make them perfectly average. <laughs> Some of that new stuff, I think, will make a uh, black Templar. Really, black Templars pretty decent. Dude, Actually, I... Raven Guard also get a good shout out with the new Phobos stuff. So I've got, yeah. new, I've got a new, so I've got a new game against the Grange stick. I'm going, yeah. I'm sticking with Marines, and I'm taking all the new stuff. Um, I'm going to do the opposite of what I tried to do, which is take a single. So, so for 12 months, for all of the last year, um, I was playing mono black templars, mono freaking black templars to every single event, and I ended up doing pretty good. So, of the last, of the last three events I went to before I stopped, I dropped two games. I did really good. I even, I even went three and two. I went three and two RTTs. Um, but my next one, I'm just gonna do a minotaurs army, okay. minotaurs chapter, and I'm gonna go mono space marines and just make the best possible mono freaking space marine army I can do. Okay. That's the new challenge. Mono space marines, nothing else, no no frills, no no assassins, no nothing, and just literally play the best. Is that no assassins mono. in the list, but so it's also just been updated as well. Twenty three, we'll twelve say. now. Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah. So turn four, we're, I think we're about to go into, we're about to go into turn five, but turn four saw um, Simon. Only one point for Stuart and Simon four for Simon from the looks. Kill one, hold one, and the bonus. Um, and Stuart got kill one. Uh, so I'm just looking at this. In theory, he should have got hold one. Hold one, shall Yeah. Well, in this specific game, it's not possible. But it turns out that you know there's some really weird scenarios. So, so Pete, you know I've uh, been bitching and moaning about people in their score sheets at CanCon, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it turns out there are a couple that I still think they're probably an idiot, um, <laughs> but there is some really, really very specific examples where maybe they're not. So if you don't kill anything in your turn, you don't get a kill, you don't get kill one. Yep. If you kill something in your opponent's turn, i.e. combat or perils Overwatch. or Overwatch, all right, you could end up with kill more without getting kill one. You could also end yep. up getting kill one, your opponent not getting kill one, and neither player getting kill more. Yep. Like, there are some very weird scenarios that, um, that can come into play. Personally, I think that most of it should just be battle rounds, battle rounds. Holds, and there's no issues at all. Well, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think the kill should and battle I think round. We just saw the Oh yeah, so the, the kill should definitely be battle round. I'm happy with the objective staying as um, player turn, and, and then the hold more being uh, battle round. Yeah. Um, so I think I think that was Stuart. I think so. I think that was the start of Simon's turn six. Five. Yeah. No, it was turn six, I believe. Five. Oh, so yeah, that's right. It was turn five. Just Stuart had literally two models on the table. So he has he has three terminus sorry in the top right. He has two characters exposed to three city ravages. It's taken a whole game for me to ask this. I just realised what I, what's weird about this mission. Aren't they playing ITC scenario five? Yes. Yes. So where is the fifth objective? Um. <laughs> dun dun dun. Mm. Like, there's meant to be f there's meant to be five objectives. Now, is that the one old or new? Is that the old or new one? one. Mike? The old one, isn't it? Well, we're playing the old one because, of course, the new one came out after yeah. uh, lists were submitted. Well, I'm reading the description in down at the pairings, and it definitely lists five. Yeah, well, and and the new one didn't change the, where the objectives were, right? it just changed no. the deployment. <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Look, I don't think it made a difference. 40k masters, ANZ masters, right here, guys. Wrong. Well, I, I know for a fact they don't have a fifth objective on the table because we, right we have two in our hands. <laughs> yeah, which, is, which is why I'm just looking at it now going, um, I th think <laughs> someone done messed up. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I just want to check something. Is this five objectives in that issue? Am I completely wrong? Sure. Yeah, four in each corner, you pull one in. Uh, you have a seat? We double check. Two in each corner, one in center. I think it's two in each corner, pretty much one in center of the table. Uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. I think, it, I think that just makes it bigger for Simon because he had that middle for forever. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, with the Venoms and the um, Ravages where they were. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think it changes the game necessarily. But I was just looking at the, the game and then I was looking at the scoring and whatnot and realized the mission I'm sure had five. And I was yeah. just looking at the picture going, there's something not right. It was a good catch. Yeah, good, good. Um, so, of course, Stuart double checked and he did it. I was like, oh, <laughs> All right, so we're just going to play around real quick. Yeah. Ah, we're big. Uh, we'll get some of these logos on. I'll get your logo on again because, uh, you know, it seems like the right thing to do. Uh, so let me just, uh, well, say hi to Pete and uh, from 40 kstatscom slash Chapstatics and Mike Bowser from the Falcon. Yeah, the Falcon guy. And Mike. Oh, and Mike. Yeah. I heard your voice. Hey, Simon, congratulations on no, the last game. That was really good to watch it. Thank you very much. Yeah, congrats, buddy. Really good showing in the last couple of games. Oh, very tired. Very tired. <laughs> hard nut princess. <laughs> very, uh, very hard games. Um, all, all, I think all, I had to work for all of them. Let's put it that way. The, the first match um, against Oliver um, was probably the hardest in terms of army. Um, three melee knights and 11 assassins. That, um, six of them all ignoring run and things like that. That was a tough one. Yeah, good. mate. You were scared at that. I was, I was. And then um, they're playing Liam, round two. 
Uh, Chris Wright. Chris Wright. That's right. That was a very tough game as well. Uh, which, in actual fact, if, you're, if we're being honest, he should have won. Yeah, but he was using the vaulting rule. No. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> it was both, right, so, so we've got some interesting We're ones. very so, happy. We're very yeah. happy with our game. So, uh, the reason why I say uh, Chris should have won is because, as I said before, in a turn five, it was a draw. And he, he had a character that literally just needed to be... Uh, an inch. Maybe half an inch. inch. And he had the moment he could have done it, he just didn't. Um, had half an inch and he would have had recon. Well, he didn't point. think he was going to kill all those yeah. witches and he was going to charge. And, yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, but as it turns out, here's another little trick thing here for you, um, which I'm sure uh, with all the... Because, Pete, you, you've got a big big love for the, the Death Watch at the moment, don't you? I do. I have a, the biggest heart on for them ever. <laughs> well, there's some interesting um, little uh, rules as written um, debates that kind of came out of a couple of games. So Death Watch veterans can obviously have bikes and terminators. Yep. All right. The unit has the infantry keyword. The whole unit has the infantry right. keyword. For yeah, the it means you put bikes up in ruins. Hold on, yeah, for the yep. purposes of Transport. transports, terminators have terminators, bikes have the bike, and so on. All right. So not only does it mean you can get up on the ruins, but the um, beta bolter rules don't work on the terminators or the bikes. Yeah, beta bolters don't work on the ones in the next units. Which is only the veterans. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yes. I'll, yeah. Make sure I'm pretty clear there. It is the veteran squad specifically there. Yeah. It's so weird. Uh, it yeah. Came up in our game. Uh, like I, I didn't even know that that was a thing. I, he was getting all the extra shots, but then he charged me up, up the ruins and through a wall, and I was like, Are you sure you could do that? And, yeah. It's all good. Well, you won the game. So uh, I mean, if you lost the game, and then we're coming back a week later, and Absolutely. you're like, I want my trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, well, no, had I lost that game, I would have been just kicking myself for the next like three weeks about picking um, his warlord yeah. as the Kingslayer rather than Saint Celestine. I just, I, my brain stopped working for, for one microsecond when I said who was Kingslayer. Yeah. And I double killed Saint Celestine, which means I left. Anyway. Yeah. Nah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think every one of those games, uh, well, the, the last one wasn't as tough, uh, not because of the opponent, it was mainly just because um, Dark Elder Vance Man, since fifth bed, <laughs> has smashed the crap out of Tyranids. Um, yeah. And that's it, like, he played it pretty much what he was, like, his game plan was fine, um, it's just, I've played against it so many times and run it, but yeah. the Tyranid version, I'm trying to yeah. crack the Vance well, Man. Uh, that's the thing, I mean, you, you were playing pretty much nothing but Tyranids for, like, what, four years, five years? Yeah. So, it's, like, you know Tyranids. That's right, and uh, the mistake a lot of people would make would be going for, say, the zone throws and things like that, um, whereas I was shooting you know, disintegrators, all my venoms just to kill one unit, and once I kill it, then I switch to the next unit. Unit, and I was just killing Termagants, and that's it. Like, just all my shots, clearing the Termagants, taking the damage, blocking um, smites with my Venoms or Witch units, just, just saying, you have to stay over there. I don't want you to um, do what Eric does like, in a lot of games, which is you know, slowly move up and tag my objectives, get bonuses, get some recon, yep. all that type of stuff. I'm going to keep throwing stuff at you, keeping the pressure up while deleting screens. Yep. Um, and that was my game plan, and you pretty much just saw exactly that. Just kill Termagants, that's it. Focus Termagants, uh, go for a couple of the characters with Salt Hairs and crap like that, but um, it worked. If you start targeting zone throws when there's still two against the life, you'll lose that game. Like yeah. there, there was a chance I lose if I start to just do wrong target priority. So um, Simon uh, is part of uh, Godhammer Gaming, uh, and if I point the right direction, that logo right there. Uh, so you can find them on Facebook. Just go to Godhammer Gaming or search Godhammer Gaming. You can. They've got a Godhammer Gaming YouTube channel where you'll be able to find round one eventually when it goes up uh, from his recordings. Uh, and he was then on rounds two to five on Down on the Network. So we're just going to download those, give them to him, so I can get them on his channel. Um, yeah, he's one of our patrons, and the Godhammer Gaming team won a whole bunch of terrain at the CanCon tournament uh, because of just how much they won. It was pretty much handed over to Matt number one Morisoli uh, from Melbourne and say, we'll get it off you some other time, because he drove up. Yep. He took it home. This guy rocks up with pretty much an empty suitcase. Yep. It's, in, it's in Mascal right now. Yeah, to, to pick up said terrain. But now, he needs to hold this and this. <laughs> We'll do it more ceremonial shortly, but um, yeah, he now has to get not one but two big guns. Um, that'll be uh, interesting going through the scan. Like they scan it through, like Joseph what's scanner. going on? Yeah. Oh, it's all plastic. It's all plastic. Um, they can look at it. It's a Nerf gun. It's not as if Nerf guns have never been shipped before. And your family have been watching pretty much the whole weekend, uh, watching watching their dad win after win after win after win, and basically saying, "We want daddy to win, but we want the guns more." <laughs> Pretty much. Like uh, I had a, as soon as we I did after game four, yeah, and I got the thing, did a Facebook FaceTime thing with you, and uh, they said, "Yay, when can we have the guns? <laughs> I'll be home tonight. I don't know if I'll have it in my bag. I'll, I'll probably have to get the small one. We'll try the try the yeah. big one." Look, I have saved some coin aside if for shipping, um, okay. so we can. Or I might be. Oh, we've got the we've got the bus going up to um, ATC. Okay. So uh, we work something out. We'll talk about that. That's fine. Um, yeah, that, I, when making that prize or trophy, I was looking at it going, "Mate, I really want a Victorian to win, and not because of any like state pride." But the effort to get that interstate, <laughs> not easy. Because uh, when it gets shipped, most of those, uh, that, the small gun doesn't, but the big gun comes in parts. Like you put it together. Um, most of it, I mean, it's not a difficult thing to do, but to put it together and then paint, I would then have to, like, we'd have to pull it apart, which is not the easiest thing to do. Um, yeah. Anyway, so we've got uh, Pete the Falcon from 40 kstats.com and Chapter Approved. Sorry, Chapter Tactics, Chapter Approved. Uh, it's been a long weekend. Uh, and Mike Bass, Do you guys have any questions for uh, the winner of both the ANZ 40k Masters and ANZ 40k Open? After you, mate.
Oh, so I've got no questions at all. I watched, uh, why, well, I would say uh, two half games and one full game that you put on. You put on quite the show. I was quite impressed. So uh, congratulations, man. Like, uh, you did a great job. Thank you very My biggest question was, was around the um, first game, to be honest, because obviously we didn't get to see that on stream. But at face value, that looks like a terrible game for you. Yep, absolutely. No, it was a very, very tough game. And, uh, only one, I think, by three points. Something like that. Pretty close. Um, the, I think the one, one of the big things that um, I talked to Oliver afterwards about this was uh, he, he so he won the roll to go first. So we had Hammer and Anvil, uh, or Pointy Hammer, one of the two. It was 28 um, to 24. Yes, yeah, so only by four points. Um, uh, he won the roll to go first, and he took it, which meant, like, I almost always want to go second. Like All my uh, after opponents from turn round two onwards gave me first turn, they won, won that role and gave me first turn, which is the right. You don't want um, MSU with OPSEC dictating who gets hold more. Oh, hold more. You, you never, you would always get hold more. Yeah. Always. Um, and so Oliver, he um, took first turn, and that was the thing in my mind that kept me in the game. Yeah. Um, because he took first turn, um, and he didn't achieve, he doesn't have that much shooting, because I had everything in my Venom, so none of his um, Vindicators could actually shoot anything. Um, he ran up first um, turn one. I deployed really far back, so there was no char turn one charge or anything like that. My turn one... That was three combat knights. Yeah, combat knights. So by Not turn one, knights. I put, in essence, two witch units to movement block um, and use some of the terrain just to slow his knights down. My, my game plan in that game was wait him out until he runs out of CP and he drops his um, assassins. That's pretty much it. It's just, I, I need to know where the assassins are, and I, I block all my back lines, so he had to really drop in front. Um, where, and, and I had all my Venoms about three inches apart because of the Caldices. Um, so yeah, wait him out, slow him down, um, and just wait until he runs out of CP, because I did have two ruins in my deployment zone, um, but devastating reach means you, know, you can always kill the Ravagers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's pretty much what happened. Um, it was the other thing that I mentioned to Oliver, he, he used three CP to just do rerolls on things that like, he thought were important, I, didn't, I personally didn't, yeah. uh, which meant by turn, uh, so turn two, he did an advance and then went full tilt, I affected that just to, again, minimize damage, um, and then turn three, he ran out of CP, yeah. which means turn four, five, six, um, everything was either on top of you know, one little up and ruin, or running in his backfield, you know, tagging Vindicares and stuff like that, which meant he had knights just standing there, like, literally doing nothing. Doing nothing. Well, a heavy stubber or... Yeah, and, like and so I just slowly, like, I didn't kill my first knight, uh, and he, oh, sorry, and the last thing was, um, on turn two, he dropped all of his assassins rather than kind of um, stagger. stagger them, which meant that I didn't have to stop, I, I could stop blocking you know, zone deployment, um, and I could just, so, uh, focus fire, kill that, I got kill more that turn, which I wasn't expecting, um, <laughs> and then, um, and that was it, like, so I got kill more, kill all the kind of main threats, um, I snuck in two Venoms full of dudes in the back lines, eventually started wrapping his Vindicares, um, and, yeah, I think it was that turn three when he ran out of CP, everything jumps up, and just turn three was when I killed my very first knight, and then turn five I killed my second knight, just slowly chipping him through, and then turn six I killed the last knight, yep. um, that was it, like, as I said, I only won by four points, and it was just, I had the right game plan, um, and I think if Oliver had picked going second, mm -hmm. I think he would have still got me. One second. Just give me a bit of a time warning. Yep. Um, Alright, we might wrap it up here because I've got a fair bit of packing up to do. Um, thanks again for uh, uh, Mike from Objective Secured. Uh, the Southern Hemisphere Open is coming up. Uh, there's a lot of events from Objective Secured coming up, but if uh, for those that are outside of WA, um, I've been to a Southern Hemisphere Open, went to one last year, where the ATC was held. Absolutely amazing show, pun intended. Uh, really, <laughs> I, I recommend it. Yeah. All the Queensland guys stayed the extra day for the event after the ATC, and we liked it. Yeah, so if you're outside of, w outside of WA and you're looking for an event to go to, um, it's a convention, and conventions are always, look, events are good, but it, conventions are better, because you get the 40k event part, but you also then get the stalls and, the, and all the other stuff. So really, really recommend um, heading over to the Objective Secured Facebook page uh, or website and checking them out. Uh, if you're a big fan of stats like I am, don't forget head over to 40kstats.com uh, or listen to the uh, Chapter Tactics podcast and you'll hear the, the wonderful dulcet tones of the Falcon. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you're uh, interested in looking at uh, post-event battle reports, uh, list advice, Anything else you want to plug? Uh, coaching? Yeah, I, I just recommend every, um, if you've got the time, or just even do it slowly, just check out the training that I posted up. Um, it's free! It's, and who doesn't like free things? I, I have had people um, pay for it, and um, they've all valued it immensely, and I thought, uh, I tried to monetize it, and I said, no, stop it. I'm going to give it out to people. Uh, if people value it, maybe they'll give me something in return. Patreon. Get a Patreon going. Well, uh, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. All right. <laughs> I'm, uh, and look, if you're in a community and you need help uh, with uh, getting a bit of visibility, you want to have a chat about things, uh, we really, really are a big fan of this whole network um, concept. It's where the name kind of come from, came from. Uh, so reach out if you've got a podcast, um, a Twitch channel, or whatever. Uh, we're quite happy to host, um, you know, uh, on Twitch or you know, give plugging where, where possible. Uh, final shout out to Knights of Dice, Frontline Gaming Australia, and OTP Terrain. Don't forget to head over to knightsofdice.com and enter ANZ40K 2019 into the discount code. And we will catch you all next time. Peace. Have a good night, boys. See you guys. Bye. -bye.